though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. Look at you now. He would have everlasting life. You seek to defy death. You cannot even defy sleep. And how alike sleep is to death. It is a painted death. Battle Brick, Battle Brick, Battle Brick Road. The Battle Brick Road to 100K begins now. You're not in Kansas anymore. Wait, what? Eric Weathers literally lives in Kansas? The Battle Brick Road to 100K. You're not in Kansas anymore. But Eric Weathers is. Be a part of it. Let's make it happen. The Battle Brick Road to 100K. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Battle Brick Road, only on Indiegogo.
Good morning, good evening, good night, however you would have it. Welcome to the Waffle Lodge, guys. It is great to see you. I'm going to say my hellos in a second, but first I want to try to figure out this awesome new two-camera feature they've got going on in StreamYards. Yes, I think I like this more than OBS. It's a lot less of a hassle, but let's see who we've got in the chat here because we've got some fantastic people here in the chat. First, foremost, amazing artist and a good buddy of the Waffle Lodge right there, Stephen Rockwood drawing, dropping links to all of the great stuff, even into you and a tip of the hat, my friend. Michael Bancroft is smothered right now, and so is that trailer guy. Sign up for the email list. Uh, what an awesome book. One of the most eagerly awaited sequels in CG right now. So, yeah, man. What is up, Jeremy Burtz? It's great to see you. Tip of the hat and great to have you here in the Waffle Lodge. We've always got a booth saved for you. You are very welcome. Teflon Ron, what's up? Oh, snap, a new episode. And good morning. Good morning to you, my friend. Yeah, we got to keep this comic skate thing rolling today. It's been a great day of news. Yeah, Narwhals, Nosferatu made my, my you know, year by asking me to uh, do some artwork for that book on the 100th anniversary of one of my favorite films, Nosferatu. We're going to be doing some cool stuff here on this channel soon, and I'm going to give you guys some sneak previews of it, man. It's going to be good stuff. Uh, Malin goes to bed so early. What a little old lady. He's probably in the chat. He's probably working. Uh, Malin is, is I, <laughs> I have a feeling he's drawing and working right now. That'd be my guess. Um, do you believe in truth, justice, the American way? I do. David Williams does. Gabe El Taib does, and so does Gary Martin. Back, Truth, Justice, and the American Way. I know that Dean Cain believes in Truth, Justice, and the American Way. Uh, one of my uh, one of my heroes, what a great dude, and it was great to see him on that 60-day closeout stream. Terror in the trenches, do not let this man be censored. My brother Vaughn Klaus uh, is doing some amazing work. He is a true pulp fan and bringing the, the energy, bringing the rawness to it, and uh, yeah. He, uh, you know, one of those people who's uh, at odds with the rules of uh, Indiegogo fighting the good fight, uh, <laughs> but uh, always willing to compromise when he has to, as we all must. Uh, let's see here. Eric Weathers, Battle Brick Road in demand. Absolutely, guys. We are so close to 100K on that. That is why I made that trailer, because I think that that book, it is ready to ship out. I just got a confirmation. My package has been put together. So let's get that thing to 100K, guys. It's, it's, it's going to close down soon, and it absolutely has to happen that's got to be a six figures young lady uh yes teflon ron what are we looking at today the start of a new page actually this is um this is me working back on the bookmark i was working on uh phil's piece and another page earlier today lots of stuff going on guys tons going on with no sparrow steven rockwood drawing are those mountains as i understand it there are no mountains in kansas yeah that's right i actually landed in kansas once we looked around you could just see for ever when you looked around Kansas. So who's to say? Uh, I just grabbed it from the trailer. Ahoy to you, Micra. Great to see you. Teflon Ron going through the stages of something. Uh, <laughs> Ahoy, maybe. That's exactly right. Ahoy, Maddie. I'm sorry. Uh, my bad there. Uh, let's see what else we've got there. Uh, Teflon Ron bookmark completed. No, it's uh, it's on its way, though. I've been working on um, some of the pages and some of the pinups uh, for the last couple of weeks and getting that story together. What is up, Lord Crackhead33? Jeremy, my brother, congratulations on wrapping up a stellar run with Monday Night Mayhem. Whatever the new show on Wednesday is, I think it's going to be the midweek show that we need. It's going to be the Wednesday show we need to get us over uh, hump day as it is known. American Comics Company in the chat. You're always in good company when American Comics Company is there. Thank you for being here, my friend. It's great to see you in the Waffle Lodge. Everybody is saying their hails and hellos, and let's do some painting. Yeah, let's get to some painting, and let's have some fun. Holy cow, this is totally... Ah, you hear that sound? That's my shoulder. Um, this is a totally different way of working, I have to tell you guys. I We'll see if it works, and we'll see... There we go. We'll see what happens when we angle these things out. I'm still not used to this camera setup. Um... So let me see if I turn that off, what happens? And I move this light over. It looks a little, well, no, actually, that's not too bad. Oh, wow, that's kind of crazy. May have to even back that off a little bit there. So, yeah, so this is going to be, just to give you guys an idea of the scale on this thing. Um, oh, my gosh, you're, you're very welcome. It was so fun to hang out with you, brother. Um, but for anybody who's wondering on the scale of this thing, we're talking about, let me see if I can get that light there. That light is bothering me, though. That's the one thing about this I'm not wild about. Um, there we go. 
is the one thing that's fun about doing this stuff. Huh. Hang on a second. Let me see what's going on here. There we go. The one thing that's fun about this stuff is that as I'm putting the work together and as I'm figuring out what I'm going to do, this is a very small piece. So here's my finger. Here's a brush. These are tiny faces. And I'm doing that detailing so that when people zoom in on this thing or when people get this bookmark and it's reduced, it's going to be mind bending. It's going to be a really fun you know, way to look at this stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. Sean is so <laughs> his joints, but yeah, no, I'm not even kidding. That that is actually what it sounds like these days. So we'll see how it goes um, and we'll just keep working and move this up here just because I want to test out the different lighting features and we will get going. It's odd that this one camera's lighting is so much, uh, so much brighter here. I'm kind of curious. Let me just see if it's on a, um, let me just see if I can edit name camera settings. There you go. High resolution. Yeah, that looks about right. There we go. Yeah, I'll figure that out at some point. So as I work on this thing, and as I'm working on this book, one of the things I've been doing right now, uh, so what will be the next page you start? The next page I start, uh, actually that I've already started, but you guys can't see it yet. <laughs> uh, the, ne <laughs> the next page I start is the, well, I'm going to, okay, let me see. Should I, should, uh, you guys have already seen the layout for this. Um, the next page I start is going to be the page where the werewolf that has raised no sparrow basically has a daughter, future daughter-in-law, although that's not really in the cards, but you get the idea, conversation with Laurel. And he basically tells her Nosferu's backstory, but also the backstory of, um, you know, Amun al-Hazared, or I should say, at the very least, um, the character that um, stole some very important things from Amun al-Hazared and then ended up coming into Nosferu's life. So he basically takes her, you know, outside and sort of says, hey, you know, I'm going to talk to you while Nosferu is, you know, hanging out in his lair. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what you've stumbled into. And it's funny because while this is not intentional, guys, but it's always a part of me, there's so much of this uh, story that is overlapping with a movie that I love, which is the movie Blade. And I've been cracking up. I've just been, you know, it's sort of like the the Whistler conversation with Karen. And, uh, you know, where he's basically, you know, giving the lowdown of how this world works and what are all these characters do. It's a little bit of an exposition scene, but the visuals in it are great because the origin for my vampires and the origin for Amun al-Hazared is ancient Egypt because I love, you know, the the Egypt as a setting. I think it's beautiful. I love the epic nature of the architecture, and I think it is a great, um, in my world, here's some of the rules of my world and how things work. Um, so in vampire lore, depending on what you're reading, but in uh, Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula, who of course, as you know, is Clint Stoker's uh, distant relative, uh, is um, is uh, that the, the vampire have to have earth from their... Uh, from their land in order to be in different places. And what I, what I'm doing with my lore is I'm basically saying uh, that's been misinterpreted. That's a misunderstanding. Um, they have to have with them um, earth from the land of the dead and the, the earth from the land of the dead is sand. So they have to have the sands of the desert of Egypt and what I love about that is, is the idea that this dead earth that can't bear life has to be what they're on to move to different places. This is some serious, serious lore. And this book, the visuals are great. Uh, on the layout page, there's, uh, and I was really happy when I came up with this. It's got one of those classic, um, Todd used to do this a lot, but a lot of artists have, where you see a character in profile and then where they go into silhouette it cuts into another image and you see basically, you know, a boat sailing from Egypt, which is going to be carrying the person who uh, stole three pages from the Necronomicon Galactica. One of my favorite parts of the story, which you can see um, Nosferu uh, taking and she's Laurel's actually reading in this bookmark. And um, he makes off with that and he makes off with a ring that he's stolen as well. And he's just basically, you know, a wretched sort of evil little character. 
And then he comes upon, you know, Nosferos, um, where Nosferos lives in his little, you know, village, so to speak. And uh, he takes it over bit by bit, burns down everything, and then makes his lair in the crypts underneath and where he finds Nosferro. And Nosferro um, never runs out of blood, ever. It's just this weird aspect to him, which, like a lot of the best you know stories for me, I'm not explaining it. It is a power. He is discovered by this trial that he has this ability. So they keep him around, keep him around like sort of like a keg that never runs out. And through their process of trying to test various ancient and evil rituals on him, they awaken in him this ability, this capacity, and this power, and he's able to bring doom raining down upon them. And this whole story of all these events is so uh, so epic and so great. It's such a great, <laughs> I mean that great in terms of scale, but also it's just straight pulp, guys. It's so fun. The visuals are crazy. Like, you know, you guys all know this page well, because when I'm breaking down my pages, I'm always, you know, looking at things. But it's like, if there's going to be a giant snake, which is essentially, as you guys know, if you were in other chats, I have a, a statue of a Titanoboa, prehistoric Titanoboa. That is what's going to happen in this story. You're going to have a werewolf fighting that, trying to rescue Laurel. That's what it's all about. And for me, as I work on this stuff, it's all about, for Zeta, it's all about pulp. It's all about all of that kind of rich energy. What's up, Tark Snipe? Gosh, I'm missing people. Let me say hello. What the book is that she is reading, and have you ever been to Egypt? I've never been to Egypt, uh, but the book she's reading is the Necronomicon Galactica, which is the book that's... Uh, um, and they used to have these book custom bookmarks. Like back when people cared, right, when they were making things, if they did a bookmark, the art was just for the bookmark, which is what we do here in CG. And so I wanted to do one of those classic bookmark things where you see the heroes and they're reading something, but I wanted to tie it into the story. So she's going to be looking at that book, which is essentially, it's it's think of Evil Dead 2, the book of the dead. I mean, that's the thing I, I'm excited about doing in this. Um, they're skating on sand. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Hail to you, Duart. Good to see you. Teflon Ron saying hello. Hail chat. Tarks 9. Good to see you. Yeah, everybody's saying hello in the chat. Let's see if I missed anybody. So... Basically, yeah, the story of this is I've got werewolves, I've got vampires, I've got mummies, and I'm saving the last and best character um, for from the uh, monster pantheon in terms of its uh, iconic, you know, novel for um, Nosferatu too, <laughs> or Nosferatu, too, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So yeah, what's up, 80s Made Consumer? How you doing, brother? Great to see you in the chat, man. What is up, Max Santiago? Good to see you. Yeah, man, it is, it is, this book is just going to be heavenly for you Universal Monsters fans. That's all I can tell you. It's going to be, um, not to mention that there is a giant dog. So here's, here's how cool stuff happens, right? In terms of um, in the chat and in our conversation. So 80s Made Consumer was talking on his channel about something that I love to hear people talk about because it's true about all of the great toy packaging and all the great stuff that's come out and been a part of, you know, art and culture. And he got me thinking about what I love so much about uh, about toy packaging from the 80s and how cool that stuff was. So. One of the things about it is I wanted to do, when I was thinking about what I'm going to do for the trading cards, which if we hit 45K, and we are, or not 45K, 25K, uh, tw which we're really close to, uh, 20, 45 is my age. That's how old you get. When you start thinking about numbers, you go to, how old am I? <laughs> um, but uh, when we get to 25K, it's going to unlock two trading cards. And I've been chewing over what those trading cards are going to be. And I finally realized I wanted to gear them towards Nosferu, but I want to reference artwork that I love. So this is what I want to do, right? Um, yeah, Masters of the Universe had the best boxes, and you are right on cue. This I'm going to do this artwork, but with Nosferu and with the, the houndies on, Phantomus. Um, and let me tell you this, guys. 
that is what I want to do for the piece. This right here. This is um, the painting of He-Man on top of Battle Cat that was on the box. And I love this painting. If you guys, uh, let me see here. I'm going to remove this for a second. And let's see here. I'm going to switch. Can I switch locations here? Nope. Nope. There we go. That's what I want. Um, if you look at this piece, what is so cool about it, let me see if I can find where I have it here. There we go. Is it's This is back in the day. It's painted on canvas. This is a one of the many beautiful traditional media paintings that were done on canvas. Look at the color inspired by Frank Frazetta and all those great artists with their color use. That's what I want to start bringing more and more to No Sparrow, that beautiful. Look at Castle Grayskull. So this painting went up for auction, and when it did, there was a decent resolution, which is this right here, uh, scan of the artwork. But look at how epic and cool that is. So that is my, that is my big goal for what I'm doing here on this project. I want to make sure that when I'm doing this stuff, that there's so much cool stuff, nostalgia stuff that we love, beautiful artwork. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I was, I was actually popped in on that stream between streams I was jumping on and was looking at the castle Grayskull stuff, man. That's awesome. But yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah. 45 K it shall be. Yeah. If, if I, uh, you know, if I earn as many as my age, I would be blown away. Uh, you guys are doing great. Thank you for helping me to make it happen. We'll get there for, we're meant to get there. Um, uh, 80s Made Consumer had you on uh, intercom system earlier. Heard you open Castle Gray skull, skull over the system. Was busy, but now it's time to drink and rest. Absolutely. Wow, I didn't know that was box art for the toys. Yes, that is how good it is. And so what we were talking about is, and, and when I was on his stream, was how the artwork that you see inspires you as, as a young person, right, to, to create to make things, to make artwork, and to imagine bigger. And so think about if those your toy boxes are hand-painted acrylic paintings and, you know, done in this Frizetta classic illustration style. And, you know, they end up getting auctioned later on. This was a great time. So the bookmarks, everything's got to be good. Yeah, absolutely, we'll do it. Uh, make some toys with painted packaging. Yeah, I absolutely, you know, listen, I'm sure that kind of stuff is going to come up and that stuff is going to happen at some point. But that's the that's the trick, man. That's what it's about is trying to make the best stuff you possibly can make for your audience. Because when somebody backs a book, they want to get something in the mail that and we've all gotten cool stuff sent to us. I've gotten a lot of great comics gate stuff sent to me. But we want to get something that feels, you know, substantial, that feels like, you know, it it the creators put a lot of love and time into it. And that's what from, from my experience, CG is about. And there's a lot of other companies that do great stuff too. And that's, you know, that's what we're shooting for, you know? Uh, let me see. Oh my gosh, it just jumped. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look at this. People are listening to your streams and playing over. Isn't that great? Uh, Tarks, yeah, Dark Horse Publishers put out some really cool hardcovers for Masters of the Universe. I know I missed that. I really want to get uh, the art collection book. Does your castle have a name in this book? It does not, but that could change. Um, what ended up, what's ended up happening with this story as I write it, because I write as I work, um, like I know what the basic plot is, but the depth comes from where the paintings take me. The, the, this story in this world just keeps getting better and richer. And so what's something I'm trying to think of something I, what I can, and I can't tell you that's the real trick. If Rob Arnold were here. He'd be saying he'd be trying to get me to let stuff out of the bag here because he's got that skill. He catches you. <laughs> he catches you when you're uh, <laughs> when you're tired and just goes, "Oh yeah, what is that then?" <laughs> and uh, and gets you to try to slip there and see what you can do. But yeah, um, the gosh, what's something I was thinking about that I was I could tell you? Well, I talked about it on the last stream a little bit. What else is there? What can I tell you that's kind of new that you might not know? Hmm. Let me think on that. Let me stew on that. But yeah, I mean, I really think that um, when I see what Patrick Thomas Parnell and all those guys are doing, making toys and making packaging, Eric Huffles does some great stuff. Um, let me see here. Uh, also, do we get a look at the castle in this book? Yeah, you do actually, because he got to go to the castle to rescue Laurel. So yeah, there is a castle in this book. Um, and there is, you see, you're going to see a lot of cool architectural stuff uh, painted, of course, because it's got to be. 
Uh, let's see here. Fans want to see you drawing every last beam and rivet. Yes, they do. I agree with you. Um, I think there are a lot of people who disagree with that. Um, but, you know, we know that that's not the case, that they don't want to see that. We know they do want to see that. Um, that's how you create that immaculate reality. Uh, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, for me, it's, uh, yeah, it's the texture of the books. It's the, you know, I always think about that, how uh, there's a lot of different ways you can approach your artwork. I still look at, and I have the, you know, the vault edition so I can look at the artwork. I still look at Todd McFarlane's artwork on Spawn, Spider-Man. There's so much stuff that I love. Hell, I still look at that He-Man box art, for God's sake. And I just want whatever works for the artwork to happen. And sometimes people are paying for the rivets. Just ask, you know, uh, Travis Charest or, uh, or or Jeff Darrow or any of those guys. Uh, yeah, but absolutely. People saying hello to Michael Bancroft, 80s Made Consumer. Yeah, absolutely. Let me tell you this, 80s Made Consumer. If it wasn't for your review of Michael Bancroft's book and that thumbnail, that's how I found you. I was flipping through. I said, hey, Michael. I saw that stuff and I went over and watched it. And checked it out. It was great. So it's amazing how that stuff happens. Very fortuitous, you know. But yeah, I mean, I want people to be the forehead speaks the truth. Every single beam. You're absolutely right. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what it's about, guys. We're working hard for this stuff, you know, and it's like Michael's just he's been crushing it with his artwork, you know, and I agree with that. Um, the thing, you know, as I, you know, and when I look at this stuff. I want these creatures like there's a lot of people who love dogs, obviously, a lot of people who love pets and like cane corsos and pit bulls and, you know, but but, you know, the the quality of, you know, what, you know, certain kinds of dogs can be certain kinds of breeds can be. So when I'm working, I always want, you know, the characters, whether it's a werewolf character, a mummy character or a vampire character, I want it to be something that people are going to look at. And they're just going to feel inspired by it. They're going to think, oh, that's cool. I want to check that out. And so that's that's ultimately what it's about for me when I'm doing this stuff is how do I make it, you know, how do I make this book as beautiful as it can be so that when you guys are checking it out, you're like, wow, this is awesome. This is a meal when you get this, you know, absolutely. Hail Michael Bancroft. Hail to you, Andy. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, yeah, everybody's saying hello, hello, because that's the kind of place it is. Be sure to subscribe to Michael Bancroft's channel. Absolutely, man. Yeah, all of you fine people who are putting out positive artwork, positive energy, and 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 sharing the things you're passionate about and that you enjoy with all of us, um, I can't thank you enough because it is a uh, it is a tonic, you know, <laughs> in this in this crazy world for us, you know, when we're, we're doing this stuff, it is, it is a very positive thing to have so many people who are passionate about, you know, whether it's toys, whether it's all this stuff we love, whether it's action figures, whether it's comics, you know, whether it's posters, whether it's movies and film, it doesn't really matter. Um, for someone who asked if I had been uh, to Egypt, which I have not, one of my favorite channels on YouTube that's been great is a channel called Pro Walks, and the guy um, does all of these walking tours, and he does a walking tour around with no commentary in ultra, you know, 4K of walking around the uh, Great Sphinx, walking up to the Great Sphinx from the gate where you go into, uh, where you get in to see it. And I never really had an understanding of the layout of you know, uh, the pyramids and the great Sphinx. So I watched his video and it, it has inspired a lot of art. I get a lot of really cool angles that you don't see in everything. And I'm going to be, you know, uh, assuming all things continue to go as they go. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, going into e ancient Egypt is going to be a big part of the setting in book two. So, yeah, but we won't get there if we don't, uh, you know, if this thing doesn't get to where it needs to be. And I think what we're going to keep Chipping away, right? That's what we do here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely, guys. Yeah, the Not That Bad giveaway. Make sure you pay attention to that. Yeah, great stuff. All of you guys are awesome. Uh, and thank you so much. Hey, Sean, do you know the artist Paul Bonner? Yes, I do, actually. Um, I just got the other day. I have not had a chance to look at it yet. But Aaron Lepresti talked about him on, his, uh, on a show that he did with the Professionals. 
So I did order that book that he suggested. I actually just sent him a private message about it the other day. And I said, yeah, man, that stuff is great. But um, if you guys want to see, so yes, I do know that stuff. It's very cool. Actually, Gabe was the first person. Uh, Gabe l was the first person to tell me to check it out too. Uh, but yes, I know that stuff. Um, a lot of people streaming tonight. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know who all is uh, streaming now, but that's, uh, yeah, man, it's fun. Um, and let's see here. Yes, everybody's saying, hail. What is up, Phil? Hail the Chizat. What is up, Phil? How are you doing, man? It was, it was great seeing you on John's channel. I just finished uh, on Jeremy's uh, stream. And I haven't been on John's uh, since I did the, um, what do you call it? The, the what's it, that show he does called? Uh, Comicsgate Presents, way back at the start of this thing. And um, I finally was like, oh gosh, I got to go on there. And it was, it was crazy, man. It was, it was crazy times, but it was so fun, man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was a good time, man. It was a good time. If you are interested in CG comics that are readily available, please check out CG now. Absolutamente do. Yeah, it is. It was con yeah website conceived of entirely by Michael Bancroft and him alone. No doubt. Uh, yeah. Get that truth out there. I mean, and so, yeah, that's the big thing for me. You know, it's like um, it's it's making stuff that people want to see. Like when I'm working on this right here and this is a unbelievably tiny face so there's my detail brush and that's the scale we're talking about right here and i haven't even finished it yet um but this is what we're what we're attempting to do with this book and this is what our our goal is uh oh let me see here hold on a sec it says device not detected what does that mean hang on a second here it's saying device not detected but i'm gonna click on it anyway what is up dar fancroft how you doing <laughs> you're roboting a little bit i don't know what's going on let me see here hold on a sec let me come back in okay all right <laughs> all right michael's michael's out he's back he'll be back in a second hang on oh no a serial killer is in the stream well you know uh, yeah, that was one of my favorite jokes. Uh, yeah, oh, it's so fun. I love doing that stuff. All right, let's see if we can do it here. There we go. That looks a little better. Am I, am I working? Yeah, a little bit. It's a little jumpy. It's a little frozen. But let's see. Australian internet, what can I say? It's all right. I don't mind. It's not keeping me up at night. You know, I mean, it, technically, we're I'm keeping myself up at night. Uh, what about if so... I just I stop my cam and then yeah, there you go. work better? Oh, there you go, man. So how you doing, man? I'm doing well. We didn't even get to chat over on John's. It's a different energy over there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's big. That was my first time coming on energy. there. energy. Yes. Yeah. It's I got to awesome. say goodbye to Mel. Bye. They're going rock climbing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You guys are so spry. It's a rock climbing. <laughs> Victoria has the... Uh, the record for speed climbing of um, under, I don't know, I'm going to say 12. There you go. Something like that. Something like you she goes nine. Anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't, it could be, it could be totally, I could be totally wrong. I, it was, she, she climbed up this wall. You know, I don't know if you've ever been speed climbing at rock climbing place in like nine, under 10 seconds, nine point something seconds. I tried it. 45 seconds <laughs> that was the oh fastest i could get it's like how is she doing this she's a freaking spider monkey dude that is crazy man yeah the kids are uh kids are amazing aren't they <laughs> really they just i don't know they, where they, they get it it's things. not for me well we think about that stuff all the time you know that the greatest thing about having twins is it really does settle a lot of that nature nurture conversation <laughs> Mm. You know, because they're a couple minutes apart, not even a couple minutes, one minute apart. And yeah, you can you can raise a kid into oblivion. But at the same time, it's their personalities are set. They've been like the odd couple forever. You know, they just have there's And it's true what they say about that twin thing. Totally true. Twins have something. I don't know what it is. Uh, the eyes wet popping face. Thank you so much. Oh, no. A serial killer is on the stream right on. Um Again, my favorite serial killer joke. 
Uh, I think I told you that one, Michael, <laughs> once. Um, I wonder if there's a giant bat on the outside of the castle in Nosferu. That would be cool if there was. Um, there's a lot of giant bats inside of it, I'll tell you that much. Michael was freezing a bunch on Malin's, Malin's stream at, as well. Is that true? I didn't notice that, but it's possible. There was a time, there was a period where I, I just sort of didn't talk because I did notice that things were going awry, but oh, it's frustrating. I don't know what's going on with my internet. It's like, there's not, Someone... my internet company doesn't know I need to stream here. Yeah. Damn. I don't know. I, I have the same problem, man. It was, oh, but you know, I, I've got teenagers, man. You know, it's like, I'll be like, is everybody off the internet? And they'll go, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll go, really? Because that's not what I'm seeing. But anyway, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, it's, it's, uh, all right. Yeah. Good evening to you, Cranberry Langers. Great to have you here. And uh, Stephen Rob Drawing says, yes, it's true. It was as noticeable. It wasn't as noticeable because there were a bunch of other people there. There you go. Mm. They're bringing you, they're bringing you the news of uh, other things. So I was showing this, uh, I think I was showing this on Jeremy's stream, but as you know, um, it hasn't even been 24 hours since we streamed together last, Michael. <laughs> it's like we were streaming at, I jumped on uh, at what, 4.25 in the morning here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like just five minutes ago. But let's see if we oh can do, God. I want to show this book I just got uh, because it's it's so great. It is called Pollen's Women and it is Samson Pollen a pulp artist extraordinaire from back in the day. And this book is everything that I'm obsessed with when it comes to, wow. um, you know, two fisted manly tales, pulp, all of that stuff. Let me see if I Before can show you, you guys. The cover, I approve of the messaging. Yes. Uh, women doing the work as, uh, as exactly what they wanted. It's, that's a quality <laughs> right there. It's quality, right? So this is whenever people contact me about doing, you know, pulp stuff, which I'm getting more of that lately. Um, this is the stuff I think of that is absolutely fantastic. Michael, this is how I see you, man. Yes, exactly right. This, this is... is a man who knows how to treat a woman. He knows and he knows how women want to be treated. And his yes. behavior is how women want men to be. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better. And when I'm looking at this stuff, listen, sometimes, you know, she can be up to no good. Let's be clear. Mm. You know, I don't want to let's not humor ourselves. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're just working, you're cleaning windows. Do you know what I'm saying here? I see what's happening. I mean, yeah. I'm like, How, what is that? And then I see, yeah, he's got a he's got a frothy window. And he's peeking in. It's not his fault. He's just but doing his job. These were what average pulp artists could do back in the day. That's all I'm saying, yeah. man. This is not, these aren't your, th these guys had great careers, but this is the dream for me. You know, the dream for me is to do a solid body of work with the time I have left and to make great, you know, fun work. And this stuff the pulp artists, look, look at this, forced to do laundry back there and hang up the wash. I mean, these were trying They times. want to do laundry, Shant. They want to do it. Women want to be clean. And they want exactly. their men to be clean and presentable. I found this out. They can Women, turn on you, though. <laughs> well, yeah, but what they want is when you go outside of the house, mm -hmm. like you are a reflection of them in terms of... Yes. So, like, you have to be presentable... Because they're like, you reflect on me, on my life choices, on my right. decisions. That's yep. why they like, you can tell, uh, you know, a woman cares about you if she's sort of picking at your clothes and making sure you don't have any lint on your on your shoulder mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yep. Uh, no, they, cleanliness is close to godliness. And uh, yes. these women look like they're close to godliness as well. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I will tell you, we've done okay for ourselves, though, too, as well. But, you know, sometimes yeah. there are people like it gets into that you get into girls go the wrong way and they get into seances and that, that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. They can you be, know, they, I mean, but the women can be easily led astray. I've noticed. That. I'm worried, by the way, that 
that this is proof of many of Vaughn's theories. <laughs> what are Vaughn's theories? The witches thing. Am I missing? You know, just, oh, yeah, that yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but that's the whole thing for me is there was a time when making crazy fun art like that was there. Let me just see what I've got here. Okay. Yeah. Never been rock climbing, but I climbed a fence to cross the board. There you go. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I, I was probably right next to you. Good evening, Cranberry Langers. Again, yes, it's true. Wasn't noticeable, but okay. That was talking about the lagging. Um, a make prostitute. Oh, a something prostitute tried to pick up my brother and I tonight. Cranberry Langers. There you go. A male prostitute. There you go. It happens. Uh, fun evening. Looks good. Highly educational information. So true. Holy moly. Wow. I'm assuming it's the book. Ooh, la, la. Absolutely. Indeed. Cranberry Langers. Oof. Unless you're into the <laughs> cool, but the prostitute wanted to both of you. There you go. Um, good pulp women's studies. Shoth. Cleaning windows was good. I got to go. Unconscious CG. Shoth. Good night. Take care. Much love. Uh, yeah, no one forced them. They wanted to do the watch. There you go, Ace Made Consumer. I agree by SJW left his ideas. Good night. Yeah, take care. So, yeah, this is the whole thing, guys, is that, you know, when we're doing this stuff, whatever it is, we try to bring our A game and we try to bring, you know, the very best of what we can do to it. And as I've kind of been working on this stuff and, and trying to figure out, you know, where all these things are going to go, working with, you know, Phil's stuff, that's what it's about. Um, that's also Ethan's theory about women. You get more than two together and they're witches. Yeah. Yes, I know. There are many people who have those concerns. Okay. Let's be real about it. We have women to. have the strangest competitive nature. And I think men are more competitive, but we're competitive in a very constructive way. Like comics gate is mm. very competitive. And the end mm. result of that competition is the art and the stories and the books and the, the presentation and the delivery just keeps getting ramped up mm -hmm. every single time. When I notice when women get competitive, it's more about how is Destroy she dressed? What person. is she wearing? Uh, is she <laughs> younger? Is she prettier? It's not constructive is what I'm saying. It's, but even, even when they've been married for say, I don't know, uh, 19 years. Hmm. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just saying, I just pulled Are that you, number You're just a random number you grabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I can't, they're like, I can't watch this stream anymore because there's a woman on it. And mm -hmm. there's like some competitive nature comes in here. Yep. But uh, look, I don't know. I, I don't pretend to get into the mind of a woman other than I know they want to claim. I have such a great follow up for that, but I love you too much. So,
Hey, what's up, people? <laughs> How are you guys doing? Michael, you still with me? <laughs> I am. What happened? This is absolutely the best part of this job, man. And I don't know how we're going to hold up, but I just want to let you guys know the Wi-Fi went down, like at the like coming into the house went down, and I had to reset everything, new passwords, all of it, dude. <laughs> what? Why? I don't know, man. This has happened to me. Uh, this has happened to me other times. You know, it's just been. Um, you know, we I, there, there can be weather, there can be a surge, it could be whatever is going on at the street level. I do not know, but it has done this before. Could do it again, and it was it's nuts. Everything just dropped. That was it. <laughs> so I just you know, as we we often do, watch it happen again as soon as I say this. Um, but as we do, I just methodically went through and was like, all right, got to reset everything and see if we can get this to happen. So, no words, man. It's just because I thought you know I how... went down, and then I was like, "Whoa, hang on, the whole stream's down." Yeah, it was it, the whole thing. Just, I mean, people in the chat have been here for it, man. It's 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 a very uh, it's a very strange thing when it happens because I just go like, "What just it 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 everything like all of uh, all the routers, the Wi Fi, the direct cable, everything turns red, man." <laughs> I just go, "Oh shit, what just happened?" So you know how it is. It's like, what are you gonna do? It's uh, these are these are the things. These are the things that happen. Doesn't the and, internet uh, know you're trying to paint a masterpiece here? I am trying to paint a masterpiece, but it's you know you've got kids. You know how it is. Don't the kids know? Yeah. See, how's your father? Says I blame your kids. I'm just tell. Look, let me talk to you guys, real. And look, hopefully, my kids won't watch this. They're probably up there smoking the pot, doing the meth. Maybe the Snapchat. As kids do. Almost, as kids do. As kids do. They might. They so, might even be up there. And I don't even want to say this because I don't want to. Like they're kids. They're you know they're still my children. You know even though they're teenagers now, they could be reading Squirrel Girl. I mean it could get that bad. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's so hard <laughs> to keep the kids off the pipe these days. It absolutely is. You know what I mean? Especially when you're their dealer. You know. Yeah. It, you know what? <laughs> let's let's scratch that. Anyway, we've got some new people here in the chat, <laughs> so let me just take a look and see. And see, yeah, I, I basically came back like Nosferatu, but don't worry, I'm sure I will be down again soon. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> so yes, Oz, great sage, great to see you, Green Laser, great to see you, Jim Cox. Thank you. I think I was able to come back because of you, my friend. That is why I was able to come back in here, Green Laser again. SDA. Oh no, there goes Tokyo. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Jeremy Burtz, Teflon Ron, you guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, hanging in there. And uh, yeah, I I went to go check everything, and everything was shut the you know what down. So here we are. Punish Fabio. It's good to see you, Punish Fabio. I feel so bad about Punish Fabio. We love you. Mm, must be gremlins. But this has happened to me a few times. Yeah, it, you know, like seriously, guys, it is that. How's your father? Good to see you, my friend. How's your father? Um, they're messing with things at the service center. Yeah, they probably are. Jordan, what? Good to see you, man. Jordan Horst, good to see you. Uh, even the reset. Yeah, it was like everything went completely down, and it's it's a mess when that happens. And uh, you know, but I I'm having an easier a full night. Than shut I down. Yeah, I'm having an easier night than I think Nick Ricada is. So I'm not going to complain. You know, I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, we'll go out. Yeah, crazy. reboot everything. Yeah, it's the IP provider, and it's it just takes a little nudge, you know, and it's like, you know, it, I was telling my wife this, that if the power flickers for a second when you're doing these things, <laughs> it's like it's over, you know, but uh, yeah, you guys are the best. So yeah, so I've been, um, I've been getting lots of pulp books because, you know, basically what Comicsgate has allowed me to do is do the artwork that I would say I've always dreamed of doing, but it's beyond what I ever dreamed was possible. And pulp art, that kind of stuff is, is I don't want to say it's a dead art form. There's still people doing it, but they're not doing it with a, um, you know, they're doing it for as sort of like a, uh, for an older audience who still appreciates that stuff, which certainly we have, 
but there's a new audience that's discovering it now because of the stuff we're doing. And I love that. That's what excites me about this stuff. So yeah, Pollen's women guys, Samson Pollen was the man and uh, he understood the Bancroft way. And I will mm. tell you, if you and Mel are willing to pose for it, I will paint a <laughs> painting of you sitting in a chair while she is mowing the lawn, you know, in whatever you feel you want her wearing in said painting. So just, you know, keep that, you know, uh, there's me always an anniversary. The, that, the 20th is on a, the lawn chair. That's right. That's right. Uh, the yeah. 20th anniversary is a big one. And, uh, you know, it's incoming. I did for actually for the 19th anniversary, I did a painting of my wife and I on our wedding day. So no pressure. I'm not saying you have to step it up. Um, but I think a pulp painting for your living room or actually even better for your shed. Uh, <laughs> could be just the thing. Yeah. For my uh, what did I call it the other day? I came up with some name for it. For tax purposes. <laughs> your workspace, your studio. Pro tip, yeah, put your modem gateway router on an uninterruptible. Yes, I absolutely need to do that. Yeah, I'm going to be having some what I people. need to do as well. Mm -hmm. Carrie always got, wait, what? Carrie always got bit by a rattlesnake? What is this? Did I miss something? Who's that? Who's Carrie? Oh, always? yeah, seriously, Jordan, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, Carrie always, uh, Wesley from Princess Bride. That's the quickest way I can get you there. Okay, um, yep. Uh, but Jordan Horst saying, I immediately was praying for Nick's family. Safety, uh, when I heard he got swatted, can be dangerous. No joke. Well, how about this? Let's put aside just Nick's safety. He's got children in the house. When are we going to start going after these people with criminal charges in a real way and make an example out of it? That's what I want to know. Well, because... I mean, I think it comes down to, you know, they've got to catch him, and that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, absolutely right. It's attempted murder, and it's attempted mass murder. You never know what can happen in these things. Uh -huh. in the dark yeah, well, of night but i refuse to believe that it's impossible to easily figure out who these people are i tend to agree with choke out on that you know it's it's 2022 you know what i mean <laughs> like it's not they're not spies you know what i mean they're not That's secret agents point. doing this it's it's a question of will and it's they're you know pissing off the right person you know or a wrong person one day and and People are going to find out who these people are. I can't believe that it's not it's not easy. Yeah. Oh, people are asking how uh, did the one and a half hour of drawing recovery go? You had this uh, worse version of what I just had happen. Yeah, it's, it's just something uh, it's something about. See, I love drawing, but if I if I have to draw something again that I've just drawn that I was happy with, yes, I lose it. I just, yeah. I don't want to draw, but then you've got to draw. I was like, you have to. I've got, I have an hour and a half left of my allotted uh, time in the morning. Uh -huh. So I had to, you know, bear up. And I, I mean, I didn't draw the same thing again. I, I, I went onto a new part of the page. Yeah. Uh, but, um it's very annoying and of course you know i put it on twitter just because you just have to uh, get it out there and say like share ah, your misery right you know, what else am i yeah. gonna share your misery yeah misery loves company and of course you know everyone's like oh just draw traditional <laughs> like ah, ah, ah. that's not what i want to hear or yeah um, can i tell you a secret or uh what's going on with the auto save i'm like oh, you know i hadn't had it set up properly all right all right yeah. i know it's my fault but still. But yeah, that's the best advice in the world. Yeah, you know that thing you did? Just don't do that. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. you know shit. So, hey, listen, I, I've got you here. 40% Zed, it's good to see you. By the way, I want to also say hello to, where are you? Gary G, great to see you too. Um, it says, uh, Bancroft wants Mel in the Les Miserables leading Liberty. Oh, I, yeah, well, yeah. You know, I feel like I kind of know Mel, so... <laughs> We have two. We have two French Revolution hats. Uh, there you go. So I don't know if we'll go Les Mis, but we could definitely do a a kind of homage. I think he uh, wants the know. liberty leading the people because of what half of the top of the dress isn't doing. Uh, so I just want to. I, I, yeah, 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 that's what I was. Saying. Yeah. So I was just saying, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. Wait, he got what? Yes, yeah, of course, right. These people are are. They're going to uh, they're going to lose it as as 
you know, their their grip on well, their grip on reality has always been gone, but their grip on uh you know on on all of it, you know, on on power starts to slide, which is so nuts, you know. Uh, if, so I wanted to share something with you that I'm working on um on the side that I don't know if anybody wants to see it, like, you know, in the general populace, but I wanted to try it out. Um, and it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, where, see if I can find it here, but I've been making some videos and watch this. It, it'll crash when I try to do it, which is perfectly acceptable. I'm hang on. Are I'm, we segueing from like topless women into you talking about you making some videos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What's wrong with that? Right. Just, just double yeah. checking. Just double checking. Anyway, nothing wrong with there it. is there is this erotic actress I love, and it turns out that I've got enough photos of your face from different angles, Michael. And I thought, <laughs> let's put two things together that I'm super into. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find this. Um. So, um, I've been thinking about, um you know, just different things that I want to do and I want to get out there and try. And one of the things I've been really thinking about lately is all these great silent movies that are in the public domain. It started with Narwhal and I talking about, you know, uh, Nosferatu and, and that kind of thing. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we did, you know, if, if I could do, hold on a second here, there we go. If I could do streams, where um, we could talk about, you know, things like that, work like that. And so if I hit remove here and then I go, God, that's terrifying to see my face. Uh, share screen, Chrome tab. So I've been working on this idea and trying to figure out if there's a way to do it. And the way I think... I um, would plan to do it would be something a little bit more like this, but with a little bit better of a zoom. So I've been taking and then window boxing old black and white or silent era films. And so this right here is um, the original uh, Phantom of the Opera from 1925. And so yeah. I'm thinking about doing some fun stuff but here's the you know where we just sit back and we talk about the film what we're seeing you know with the generic track over it so that you can that's you know, the uh stuff. that must be the opening scene where we meet christine where they're, Absolutely. Where they're practicing well here's i'm a the big fan of phantom of the opera oh you are are you in yes. all its forms in all its forms, uh, even when I was young, I read books, uh, novelizations, uh, seen plays. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to see the musical. I took Mel. She hates it. <laughs> but I well, she hates account. musicals or she hates? No, musical. yeah, she's not a fan of musicals. She likes the odd one, but she doesn't like Phantom of the Opera. She doesn't like the, uh, well, she doesn't, no, she doesn't like the Andrew Lloyd Webber Phantom of the Yes. Opera. Yeah, so, I, I've seen it several times. I saw it in uh, I saw it in London, and a lot of people I know were really into it. Um, and uh, but yeah, it's I really think that that showing these kinds of films um, and even you know this kind of stuff would be fun. And this is one of the big first films of universal horror, you know. And that's the thing about it that is so fun. So I'm kind of. That's one of the things I'm working on and something I desperately want to try to do at some point is I've got um, I've got uh, the silent version of um, oh God, what is it? The silent version of uh, the original Wizard of Oz from 1910. And I'd love to do uh, a watch with some of us and definitely Eric Weathers and then talk about his book. So yeah, lots of stuff that I'm messing around with right now for this channel and uh, we'll see how it goes copyright free copyright free guys it's ours it's important you know it's uh with terror in the trenches and with all that great stuff going on erotic actress plus bancroft equals thumbs up you guys are absolutely right nightmare fuel incoming <laughs> yes it has to happen oh good god no yeah that would it's listen guys with everything we've been through <laughs> as a group now 
but uh but yeah i i love that old kind of stuff but you you're into the operatic stuff too so i'm a mm -hmm. little bit more sleazy yeah, yeah, I dig a little it. bit more pulp <laughs> i dig yeah, it man. share my screen there Sean, yeah yeah, yeah. oh sweet yeah this is the this is the wall that is in the bookstore where Ella works in the Lucent. Oh, that's beautiful. And I man. just covered it with things that either inspired the story or I just inspired me as a writer. So that Mondo Inception. poster for Dirty Harry is awesome. Yeah, love that. That was sort of more I just, uh, like, obviously, I mean, who doesn't love Dirty Harry? But it was like, I just love the design so much. I it's so good, it in yeah. there. And that's part of like what I'm doing as well. Uh, Matrix, Silence of the Lands is possibly my favorite movie. I'm obsessed with Silence of the Lambs and that that world that uh, Harris made. Uh, have you read The Invisible Man? No. That's another good one. Wiz Look, and there you go. Wizard of Oz is in there. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Adventure into the Strange World. Uh, War of the that. Worlds. There's Gilgamesh. I love War of the obviously. Worlds. Yeah, War of the Worlds is so good. I um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I did a painting. I I did a speed paint video originally. One of my first ever videos back in, I don't know when, 2012 was a uh -huh. 17 minute cut down of the War of the Worlds radio thing. Oh my and, gosh, uh, I have done set, stuff with that too. Yeah, it's such it's such a good piece of audio. Orson Welles so is the good. shit, man. Uh, you've got uh, Sandman in there, Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, also one of my favorite Shakespeare's. Uh, Watchmen, Metamorphosis, if you've read that. Uh -huh. That's a crazy book. Uh, 84, uh, Animal Farm, Dracula. To Kill a Mockingbird was the first ever novel I read. Oh, wow. And... Um, Alice in Wonderland has obviously a pretty big um, influence on the Lucent that uh -huh. falling through the uh, going down the rabbit hole. But there it is right there. Phantom of the Opera. Yep. Uh, yeah, massive I mean... influence on the whole thing. The whole thing. Wow. I'm doing here. So you're saying you wouldn't be against the idea of watching that film? And uh, shooting the shit over it. Absolutely at some point. not. I would love because I haven't seen that. I would love to see. Oh man, what a great uh, thing to have ahead of you! As a, Seriously. Uh... So this is this is the thing I, I always I, I always have to say because this is a part of our American history. What is up, Mo Biggs? Great to see you, my friend. Yeah, Kafka. Uh, we've got there is mm -hmm. uh, a book there. Whoa. People are loving it. War of the World soundtrack is great. Absolutely. Haven't seen it yet, but I do love Clint Eastwood's Western films. Absolutely. Gilgamesh. And, and I, I can never pronounce it on the fly. Enkidu. I, I can't read it. What is it? Enkidu? Mm. In, yeah, Enkidu. Never... Yeah, it's a, well, I mean, that's our, that's our interpretation of ancient Sumerian language. Yeah. I guess it's whatever you want. Yeah. Will there be a vampire uh, playing a pipe organ in this comic shop? Yeah. And only in my dreams, there would definitely be uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is one of my favorites as a movie. And also, um, yeah, do it on Gabe's. Yeah, maybe. Well, see, this is the thing. Gabe and I have got such a backlog of action films that we've got to do. But you're right. Yeah, Dirty Harry actually would be perfect to do on Gabe's because we just we oh, already Dirty did Harry drum. is so good. You yes. You know, it's, it's a quintessential one of those movies. Mm -hmm. that people say oh you would never be able to make that anymore and that's yeah. the shame of it that's that's the tragedy uh yeah, remember what i said know, about that man yeah. uh when people say that my response is always you wouldn't be able to make that now yeah yeah you know we can, it's we can that, do whatever the hell it we presumes want. asking permission you know and yeah. and i just am done with that because have you ever i oh, sorry go, on. go ahead no, no, no. Go, I was going to say, you're hanging around like, uh, I don't know, extended family or just whatever it is. You're in out there, mm -hmm. out there in polite society. And yeah. someone will sort of lower their voice and say, no, this isn't very PC, but, and then they'll say something and it'll be completely milk toast. And I'm just oh, like, really? yeah, well, you know, just like, <laughs> oh man, dude, <laughs> why, you gotta... <laughs> why are people like that? Dude, you got to understand, man. Every, 
like uh yeah i see i don't even want to get into that topic but the um the, i have a slightly different experience with that kind of stuff it usually begins with a hey man now i ain't racist <laughs> but yeah oh my god dude but it's just it's always to me, it's it's always hilarious, and it it leads to like I always try to imagine it as a uh, as a comedy show. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I have this this one gift of stepping outside of myself and laughing at the absurdity of it. <laughs> but it's it's yeah. I mean, when people say this isn't PC, um, I mean, I I kind of I guess we're witnessing a, I, 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 the worm has turned, as, as I said earlier. Uh, the other day, and I think that we're, by the way, people in the chat, people of the chat, got 24 people in here. I haven't looked at the likes, but I've just been through a tremendous ordeal. Uh, and so is Michael on my behalf. Hit that like button for mm. me. Share this out. Let's make this a big stream. It's been through so much, and it's only one hour and 19 minutes in. But um, But when I look at that kind of stuff, when I see what's happening with Elon Musk, I see what's happening with all that stuff uh people coming in there's people with some balls and now there's people who are comfortable having balls because some of us have kind of put ourselves out there right yeah with this stuff and um it's it's i think that the the mood is turning and it's going to be i'm glad it is but it's going to be so obnoxious to see all these people acting like they were never a part of it uh mm -hmm. <laughs> of this yeah. crazy crap right. was, like, i was just following orders it'll be the same thing yeah oh uh, yes the um <laughs> i just didn't i just didn't i had to look after my kids i didn't you know i i couldn't lose my job and that sort yeah, of stuff of it'll all be the same um but uh it's not just so elon will own twitter yep. and he'll be uh you know presumably a yep. champion for free speech on it uh -huh. and disney plus Disney is, uh, you know, now it has to, I guess, play by the rules. Do you know uh, what that whole uh... thing is? Do you know about what the, like, I, I've done a lot. I've looked into it because of uh, uh, Valiant Renegade and the guy that he has on his channel uh, go into the financials, which I love. You probably do too, but I love financial reports and analysis like that. And, um, the this is this is the thing that's crazy. So when Walt was buying up all that property, his original idea for Epcot was to build an experimental prototype community of tomorrow. So he was going to have families and people who worked there. He wanted to build a city. So they gave them the right to basically, he said, but I want to innovate and I want to build with materials without having any red tape. So they created these two basically Vatican like areas for that purpose alone. That's the original agreement. And they mm -hmm. never went and did that. They then made all theme parks. So think of it like this. Every theme park in Orlando has been competing with them. And they have basically the ref is in the tank for them. And they've mm. still been losing ground to Universal. So all of this, these scare tactics people are using about that stuff right now. Disney's in deep shit. Deep shit. <laughs> they are... There's... Yeah, and that's like that's where they make their money. And when you put it like that, I'm like, well, no wonder that's where they make their money. Yep. And Florida covered that. What Florida's pissed about for people missing out on this is that California and their liberal paradise, when they wanted to reopen Disneyland and they had given all this money to Gavin, you know, whatever, he turned them down. And if Florida hadn't let them reopen, they would have died. And Florida did, and then they said, we're going to tell you how to run your government. And it's odd how people aren't into that. They told the voters of that state they live in in incredibly uh, generous you know, conditions to go F themselves. And the people were like, excuse me? You know? Yeah. Stop. Uh, you're, you're speaking to people who don't live in this state. And they fucked up. Fuck around and find out is what happened there. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, so there's that's happening with Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Twitter. You've got CNN Plus, which I Netflix. was laughing at, which is apparently Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, and so CNN Plus 
spent three hundred million dollars with yep. a plan to spend a billion and yep. got eleven thousand subscribers. <laughs> right. Something like that. I mean, ouch. Joe Rogan didn't find that hilarious at all. Um, <laughs> Joe had a great show on that where he just laughed. He, he goes, since they went after me, uh, I've gained 2 million new subscribers. Yeah. And they uh, freaking completely had to shut down after three weeks and going through $300 million. Fools. Total fools, man. Yeah, the worm has turned, man. People are going to be... This is, and, and that's why I was talking about... Because I know a lot of people have talked about... Uh, you know, oh, you, you know, gatekeeping and keeping all these, you know, keeping whatever people out of Comics Gate or, you know, or, or not in, we talk about it, but I know Eric July talked about it, people like that. And the thing about it that I still can't get past is with all those topics is if Johnny Depp couldn't see Amber Heard coming, what had he been doing for his previous 50 years of life? You know what I mean? I don't know, man. When you get to a certain age, and I guess you're you're single again, and some pretty lady comes. Well, no, up no, and... he was with somebody, and oh, was he when they hooked up? Yes, he was with his not married partner, and she was married at the time to a girl, a young lady, as I understand it. And the reason why I bring this up is because if you're a nerd, and you're sitting at the nerds' table, let's say comic book industry. And a girl who's a six comes up to the table and says, hey, can I sit with you guys? It's probably a trap. And <laughs> so, so, or I'm really into comics. All you got to do is ask one question to figure out if that person's serious or not. And apparently the video game industry couldn't pull that off. So <laughs> to me, it's, I don't think the work of, of figuring out who really wants to be there is hard because nobody puts in time on that stuff. You know, I mean, how, look at the, these people, uh, Heather Antos and all those people. What are they doing now? They, they, they were put in the top artificially and they couldn't like stop their descent. Like it's, it hasn't even been that long. And it's like we were like, who the hell is that now? It's too fucking funny, man. We'll all... Um... It's just been it's been incredibly frustrating to watch and go down for as long as it did. But you know you yep. Eventually, I mean this is, this is the thing that I mean it, we seem to be destined to repeat the same error in uh -huh. that uh, we have to test socialism every uh -huh. or some form of it every yeah. time to every generation. Yep. Because every generation comes along and, and thinks, well, why doesn't it work? I don't know if it was you who was telling a story about a teacher doing, t like showing socialism to their kids, how it works in, in practice. And uh, I was listening to yeah, someone was talking about this, and they were like, the teacher gave a test. And then mm -hmm. after, after the test was done, I said, okay, everyone who got an A, like everyone's scores gets uh, averaged. So everyone who got like a D, now they've all got a C plus. And everyone who got an A also gets a C plus. Uh -huh. And, you know, there's grumbling from the A students and cheering from the D and F students. And then the next time they take the test, all of a sudden now, the, the, the average score goes down to a D. And then the next time it's down to an F. It's because the, the A students, well, they're uh -huh. like, well, why should I try? Yep. You know, because I'm going to get downgraded anyway. And the D and F students are like, well, why should I try? Because I'm just going to get lifted up. And then very quickly, the students yeah. see within three tests what happens. Everybody is getting an F. Like, that's their actual score. Uh -huh. And... uh and th this is what happens, you know. So we all know this. If, those of us who've studied history and looked into this, we all know this was the inevitable outcome of all of this uh -huh. equity BS. Bullshit. But, you know, it just, it, it's very <laughs> frustrating. 
it's very frustrating, especially when so much of the media that they purport to love and be defending things like Star Trek and old comic books and all that sort of stuff yeah. explained all this in great detail. However, it's not, it's, we're not, we're, how do I word it? We're not destined to repeat it. We never, and, and we didn't pay attention. We did not mind the store when people who were highly motivated went in and made this rewrote history of this ideology. You would, and, and Razor Fist did a great video on this explaining how a certain kind of movement in Germany uh, <laughs> is predicated on the ideas of Marx, that Marx is directly responsible for it. And by the way, I just want to speak to this, uh, Jordan, by the way. Yes, I can agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I heard the bit where Johnny said when he married Amber Heard, he goes, yeah, I basically married my mother. And I'm very sympathetic to that concept, I can tell you, uh, and people overcoming that stuff. What is up, Eric? Good to see you, my friend, master artist and creator. Um, but this is the thing about it. You teach people the opposite of of uh, they, they've taught people, and this is in our vernacular, the opposite of, of the National Socialist Party of Germany is um, communism. And that's not true. They are together. The opposite of them is capitalism and America. We're the people who defeated those folks. We're not those folks. And that's that's something that teachers get away with saying wholesale all the time or alluding to. And um, yeah, and, and it's it, it, I just got a book. Razor Fist suggested this book. It's kicking around here somewhere called The Red Decade, which takes it all the way back to the early 1900s and this stuff. So it's been it's this is not an old concept and it hasn't been thoroughly debunked in our pop culture yet. And that's the problem. Like we think about the average person, in their pop culture. Have they have they said, you know, have they had a pop culture that explains what communism does? I don't think so. Do they teach it in the schools in the States? I know they don't. They don't talk about the evils of Stalin or any of that stuff, but they also frame uh, corporatism, which actually isn't backed up by any of the history, um, as being what Nazism was about when it was really about state control and deprivatization of resources. You know, uh, that's why mm -hmm. Klimt paintings of family, Jewish family members were had their names changed and became pop property of that government. And it's it should disgust people, you know, uh, the the that and it was called the National Socialist Party of Germany. It's in the freaking name, you know. So whenever somebody throws that term at someone, I'm always like going, no, they're not a socialist, but you are, <laughs> you know, so throw that somewhere else. That's what that word stands for. Yep. No, it's not even comedy light. That's the funny thing. It's it's not. It it, it seems to be if going off of the stuff that we've seen. True, actual, according to oil, it seems to be like turbo communism, man. It's pretty scary. Uh, it was. It's it's. But yes, I get what you're saying. But they're the same. They're for all intents and purposes, they're the same thing because Marx says the um, the goal of socialism is to move things into communism. So it's like you know. It's kind of like your first hit of heroin versus black tar heroin. I mean, it's the same shit. Uh, different, uh, different degree of hell. And so, yeah, I think that, you know, when I heard um, Riketa got into his, yeah, it's the primer. You're absolutely right. Uh, and hey, Dan, what is up? Good to see you, my brother. Um, so for me, when I heard uh, just some guy and Nick Riketa have that debate, which was brilliant, by the way. The way that Nick explained. When did this happen? Oh my gosh! I think this is responsible for you know whatever's going on with him right now. So Nick and just some guy were on another stream, and just some guy was talking about what the government should have the right to take away uh, hand sanitizer from that guy who you know bought up all the hand sanitizer, all this other stuff. And Nick gave this incredibly, like he basically said, "So you're, I, I'm okay with that." You know, he said, I'm OK with that because it's his money. He has a right to do this and the government just can't come and take. And it really. Yeah, that's that basically led to him, you know, and, and Nick kind of was doing it jokingly. But the more just some guy dug his heels in, the more Nick kind of went to town on him. And you can find it online. I mean, it's it, he did a rebuttal video. Just some guy did a rebuttal video to it that didn't explain anything. Nick Riketa did a rebuttal video that just 
Like, I just don't want to argue with Nick Ricade ever. It's not my thing. Yeah, just give them another yeah, chance, Mo. They'll get it right. Probably do time. that. Yeah, he's he's uh, yeah. Laugh out loud. Nick broke. He did. He did break him. Um, yeah, USSR. Thank you very much. Union of Socialist Soviet Republics is indeed the names. Yes, I said. What do what does that one particular party and the USSR have in common? They share one word: socialist. It ain't rocket. Like if our history classes only got that done then we'd be in a better place and we need to make sure that happens communism is evil socialism is evil get it into your heads it's it's that simple that should be the job of at least the american education system which is supposed to help educate the sovereign it's and funny how it it's funny works. because it's funny because they always gaslight they yep. always project yep. always and yep. it, it, the, the whole thing is, well, socialism is workers taking back the means of production, when in nope. reality is that socialism is, uh, you know, a massive entity, usually the government. No, it's uh, straight just stealing. the government. <laughs> the government taking it's, it's over taking, means of production. Taking over your labor. Like they, they say, like, we want to own our own labor. No, no, it's the government owning your labor. You own nothing. Yeah, because uh, you, you, you ca get individual nothing. capital goes to the government. Like right now, Michael, let me ask you a question. Do you own your labor? Uh, yeah, I mean, parts you of do. It. But okay, this what uh, we're doing right does now does come in and take a good chunk of it. Oh, sure. But do they take all of it and then decide what you it. get? And that's a huge difference that people can't even wrap their minds around. So if I was trying to teach people about communism and socialism, I, I could do it in one day, you know, because I'm a good teacher. Uh, I could do it even faster than that teacher. I would say, all right, everybody, do you think that individual rights don't come over the need of the group and that it's all basically relative? Yeah, okay, cool. Everybody get out your cell phones, and now I want you to clean wipe them, delete every individual trace of them off, and then pass it permanently to the person to your right. It's theirs now, because I said so. You happy? That's all it is. You don't own your shit. It's freaking terrifying. And the way they got Dr. through Chicago. to college students, the way they got through to leftist college students out yeah. there, um, is they because when they said that to them, people were like, "Yeah, that's fine. You know, I don't need, I, you know, they, I don't need a material, whatever, blah blah blah." That didn't get through to the college students, so they yeah. said, "Okay," and they did the whole testing. They said, and the next test. Or whatever your yeah. score yours will be averaged down and that's when they were like well hey, hang on no no i worked really hard for that i shouldn't be penalized and other people shouldn't be shouldn't have to work as hard and get this get the same score as me it's like are you beginning to understand now like yeah. the what's what we're actually talking about because before you go out and try and work for yourself and support yourself it's all theoretical. You uh, you don't own anything at when you're yeah. young. So what's it to you if they take away all that you own, which you don't own shit anyway. So uh -huh. you're just going to be getting, and then I realized that well, you could also work, you know, your entire adult life and build and be super successful. And then someone is going to take that away from you and yeah. you away from your children. If you want to give it to them. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, dude, this is, the, the craziest thing about this is that, you know, about all of this kind of stuff is, it's, if people want to live in those kinds of utopias, there are so many for them to choose from and go experience it. It's, it's yeah. that, you know, it, like, for example, and by the way, when you guys were talking about how many, uh, it was my main man, where is he, where is he, uh, God, Henry Bemis was talking about they all have um, Republic in their name. Now, the one that scares the hell out of me is the word they all have in their name going to Jonestown, which is the people's. The people's church, the people's temple, the people's uh, I think it was the people's temple, not the people's court. That's a different thing. But the, the people's temple um, in Jonestown, it's the same thing. And what was going on in Jonestown, which a lot of people don't know is that it was, I believe it was 
I don't know if it was 80, but I think it might have been 68 percent African-American in that revolutionary suicide that they did down there, which disturbs me that they did that. And then there was the um, uh, and what Jim Jones was doing is he had a lot of elderly black Americans down there and he was living off of their social security checks. That's how that's how dark that was. But uh, he referred to America as a racist and fascist America. That's how he referred to it. And then he went down there mm -hmm. and executed all those people. It's crazy. Utopia key, uh, keyword important F as it's different from Utopia. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's the switch, as I recall. Also, hold on a second. I got to start reading these in the right direction. Hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Yes, one party switch from thinking different races should be treated differently to thinking different races should be treated differently. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the other party switched from everyone should be treated equally under the law to everyone should be treated equally under the law. Yeah, I mean the way I look at it is is it's it's if it's to me it's so not even about politics. It's about basic beliefs, which is to say, do you should you should you be able to benefit from your own work should you have a reasonably equal opportunities not equal outcome there's all these very basic things and by the way while nothing is perfect the everything else seems to be hell and i think that should yeah that's my something. favorite answer that's my favorite answer yeah. to any socialist argument as opposed to what yeah. As Absolutely. opposed to what that's all you need to say, as opposed to what. But uh yeah. we, we found out during the whole lockdown business here that uh -huh. there is a fundamental disagreement. And I don't know if it's a disagreement or a misunderstanding or a misalignment of values or a changing demographic. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I do know that we found out that yes, the majority of Australians are only too happy and willing. And they celebrate giving up freedom in exchange for for at least the appearance of safety. And uh -huh. that, you know, it turns out there wasn't any actual actual extra safety to go around, but at least the appearance of safety. They'll give up yes. almost all the rights and, and see that as a good thing. And uh -huh. I don't know how to address that. I don't know if if it if it was always that way and I just didn't know about it. But one thing it I was... want to ask yeah, you is as an American, mm -hmm. yeah, what is the what is the role of government? Well, what do you mean? Like fundamentally, what is why do we have a government? Like, what are they what are they supposed to do? What are they there for? Because in Australia, it seems uh, like to the average, you ask the average Australian, it's going to be like the government is everything. It's the there, business yes, owner, the, it's the gotcha. lord, it's the key, it's the person that keeps you safe, it's the person who keeps you healthy, sure. it's the person you fall back on when you're in hard times. Uh, it's it's everything. It's the person who makes sure that you uh, don't hit your head when you get on a bike. Okay, um, yeah, all that's not. It's the it's not the role of the government um, that I think people in 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 our country in the United States, um, the people are the sovereign. That's what has to be understood. So instead of the sovereign being the king or the queen, the people are. So I used to ask my students what Article 1 of the Constitution of the United States was. None of them can answer me except for one Canadian got it right once, which was heartbreaking in and of itself. Um, and uh, I used to ask them that question. And they said to me one time, I'll never forget this. They said, um, why do I said, well, you guys are talking about how the president at the time, which is like three or four presidents ago, was they, they kept saying he's violating the Constitution, he's violating the Constitution. I go, you guys talk a lot of politics. Let's see what your basic civics are. I mean, you're saying that he doesn't know the Constitution. Let's see if you guys know something as basic as what Article One in the Constitution is. So I said, so tell me. And they went, freedom of speech. I said, nice try, darlings. That's an amendment. That's the first amendment. That is not Article One of the Constitution of the United States. What does it do? You're inventing a country. What does it do? And they were like, oh, I don't know. And I said, it establishes the legislative branch of government. Article two is the executive branch. Article three is the judiciary because we're inventing a country here to which they replied to me. They said, well, it's why do we have why is it more important for us to know it? Uh, we're not running the country. 
The, and I went, yes, you are, you blanking morons. You mm -hmm. are. You are the sovereign, you fools. You're responsible for knowing this. You know, my kids for Christmas a couple of years ago, we got them uh, pocket copies of the Constitution. And we talk about this, as you could probably imagine, I would. We talk about this stuff all the time. And what I tell people is the role of the government is to basically do, you know, take care of or well, very basic things. And that's grown and expanded as time has gone on. But it is to serve the individual liberties of the people. We don't have a statue of freedom. We have a statue of liberty. And as Ben Franklin said, since I see Henry Bemis dropping Ben Franklin there, uh, that quote, I love that quote. But my other one was democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what to eat. Uh, liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. And that is mm. one of my favorite. Ben, ben Franklin had a few, but here you go from Henry Bemis. Benjamin Franklin said that those who would trade liberty for security deserve neither. The greatest yeah, if, move. If, if, if I, go ahead. If I were to say that to the average Australian, they would say that's Yankee bullshit. That's just, that's just. You know what you should American say to them shit. from me? Who won the war? Oh, wait a minute. Did we ever have one? <laughs> Never mind. That's not the point. That's not the point, Mike. I like, I like what 40% Z said. The role of government is supposed to be uh, administer yeah, international infrastructure and protect from foreign threats. That's what I said to Victoria. We got on this subject the other day with Victoria. Yeah. Because she has these questions too. And I said, the, what is the role of government? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't that succinct, but I essentially said, you know, they, they're, they're there to essentially preserve the liberty of the people, their yes. rights and all that sort of stuff. You know, they, they administer the, the courts and the police force and the fire, whatever it is, whatever they're in charge of. And yeah. they protect us from foreign threats. Everything else is an overstep overreach of their authority. All this, uh, like trying to keep you uh, healthy or whatever it is, and trying to kind of keep you happy and all this sort of stuff. That's yeah. that's supposed to be up, left up to us. And... Yeah. Well, I would also argue that the government doesn't uh, protect us from those threats. Um, the people protect their fellow citizens from the those threats. And the government has a responsibility to have some care and in the interest of the people, both long and short term, to use such force for the benefit of all, uh, like, say, it has done and does its best to do. But the, it's I think the craziest thing in the world is, is the government doesn't have money. It has your money. The government mm. doesn't have uh, it isn't a military force called the government that's made up of government. It's made up of people, people serving their country, people in the service of their fellow citizens. And those people being deprioritized over people who just don't want to have to do anything is one of the great sins. But I think we've got to start realizing that government is a bureaucratic system, but it's always the people. The people give the government the money. Without our money, they wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff. The people give their children to the government to defend this country, but they're defending the people, not the government. Do you know what I mean? It's it's such a, the government is there to make sure that the people's interests are looked after and the people have a responsibility to be informed and understand what their responsibility is as the sovereign in this country. And, and the fact that, I asked a buddy of mine who I talk to all the time about this stuff. And I said, I, I know this is going to be offensive to you, but you talk to me politics a lot. Have you ever read, you know, you're, you're 60. You've lived in this country for 60 years. Have you ever read the Constitution of the United States, the country you live in? And he said, no. And that blew my mind. It is not a long document. Ponder that for a minute fucking mental it's just crazy you know i mean have you mm. read the australian uh constitution oh back in school we read it ponder that i, mean, for I don't have a, i don't have a copy of it on my uh desk shant but uh now we, we we get into all this stuff uh back in in school i mean i hope they still do i don't know if they do yeah 
Yeah. But uh, I, I was I was pretty shocked when whatever you know everything that went down with COVID went down, and I just was like, yeah. people just gave up everything without a fuss. Yeah. Yep. And and I will tell you this, it taught us a lot about ourselves. It was actually a really good thing. It taught um, it, 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 it in in this particular sense. I think that people are, as people start to look back on it already, it's become, it's been a mirror. And, you know, with all these, thanks to social media, uh, let's see, the dying days of YouTube, I would hope there are more stalwart people in Australia. Yeah, I agreed. Um, to beneficiaries, which is expressed the people defined as individual citizens. Yes. And as Ayn Rand would say, the individual is the smallest minority. And it is so true. Um, here I see it um, as a way to constitutionally by our constitution of which is a unique contract by the governed to bind the smaller limited governments to that constitution. It's um, it's expressed purpose. Yeah, there you go. Beneficiaries, I'm sorry, which is expressed as the people defined as individual citizens. You're absolutely right. NDA, uh, SDA says, ding, not NDA, <laughs> ding, says ding. Teflon Ron, the government has too much of our money. Yes. Uh, taxation is theft. Agreed. Uh, are we going to be quizzed on this later? Because if so, <laughs> can I get a bathroom pass? You're out. You failed that test, groomsman. <laughs> when one of your groomsmen comes in the chat causing trouble, it's a natural law-based constitution. I'd also say the other thing people are missing is, and Disney clearly missed, is it's a federalist system, which means the federal government, it, it would just be, it wouldn't even be called that, is that there's a federalist government and there's local governments to handle the more local needs of the people. And I don't know what the system is in Australia in terms of that stuff, but it seems to me that at the more local level is where you're going to see the change happen. You know, that's where you're going to have to make stuff happen anywhere, you know, and that's how Florida got, you know, and how Texas got Elon Musk and Florida got so many people moving there. And the Walt Disney company uh, is not using its head, you know, yeah, the Constitution is short and to the point exactly as it should be. Preach on. Yeah, 2020 was horrifying. Yep. Uh, but we, I think it, it really was. Um, <sighs> people are looking at the uh, cultural raising of people that were, were, you know, grew up in the educational system that really started in 2005 and led to 2016 of children are perfect little vessels. And uh, the perfect child theory, which has been disproved, and that it's society that's the problem, that all kids are born perfect, which is ridiculous. Um, and hail Joe Wagner, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. The dying days of hail the dying days of YouTube. Who? Question mark. Wink. Uh, Henry Bemis, our grandparents were two generations of Aussies living the high life uh, away from the troubles of the world. No asking where the money was coming from. Okay. Maybe you can speak to that, Michael. Um. Let's see here. Do you want to read that again? I can read that again. Uh, so he's answering Henry Bemis. So I think we yes. Let me go that. back up. Uh, mm -hmm. Constitution, short to the point. Let me go back. Oh wait, here he uh, said oh, okay. it was the. I hope there are more stalwart people in. Oh, there's lots of stalwart people in Australia. There's, there's. I just don't think there's enough, and I just don't think enough people think about this stuff. I don't think enough people think philosophically or pragmatically or you know they don't know anything yeah. about say for instance enlightenment thinking or anything uh -huh. like that they don't it's just not part of their day-to-day -day, so it's just i was i was shocked i was they say things like you know i'd say something i'd tweet something you know in in a moment of desperation in the middle of a friggin 200 and whatever day lockdown where i'm in I'm, I'm under a you know three quarters of the year under a curfew by the uh -huh. victorian government yeah and i'm you know I, I tweet something about rights and it's just a, a slew of people saying you know we don't have those rights and it's like you can't get through to them because they're to them rights are edicts that governments in their benevolence hand down to the lowly people and allow them to have and it's not that innate uh you know what, what Where it is that, that natural uh, right or whatever oh well let's let's not skip over this though and this is this is just a statement of reality uh not this or this is a statement of historical fact 
not a statement of uh, of you know anything more. Although um, you know that's a conversation that can be had. Where do our rights come from in the United States at its founding, or I should say, upon its independence? We hold these truths to be self-evident. You know that yep. one? Endowed yeah, by all who? Men, uh, endowed by our creator. Endowed with, by our creator. Uh, with certain inalienable, inalienable rights. rights. And this is the thing that people, when people say to me, as they often do, um, yeah, about California, but in 2020, the country, yeah, got a taste of the fortified, yeah, exactly. Um, but it's this is this is the thing about it right it's um for a second there, i thought you were talking smack about kim novak <laughs> uh but uh yeah uh yeah they <laughs> spelling is going after you there uh they don't think it uh think it at all michael so this is the thing i always say when i talk about that stuff someone said to me one time they went yes but the declaration of independence isn't a legal document of this country right it's not in the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence is is a different thing. And I said, well, yeah, but if it's not an important founding document, then how can we celebrate 1776 and that paper? The Constitution wasn't around at that point. And so I think that that's something that um, people have really fought because in place of something above the government, you know, and when, and it says creator, it's very to the point there. Um, it's when you take that out of papers, you get communism, you get the government, you get the government is God and the government makes these rules because people need something like that. And it's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. The declaration well, Australia will that. never be, Australia will always be secular. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. as long as we're made up of the people that we're made up of here, but I don't think you need to invoke a God. You certainly can. If like I think that's Can why. Can you that show creator... me an example, by the way? This is a question I have, man. And this is I have I I this is something I've spent a lot of time thinking about as I've had these conversations. Can you give me an example where there isn't a God evoked at the creation of these things that has worked? No, I'm I'm firmly of uh, sort of I'm on I'm on board with uh, Jordan Peterson on this. And yeah. I don't even know if he even notices it when he talks about it in the way that he yep. should, uh, where that even if you don't believe, you should at least mm -hmm. acknowledge uh, the uh, the benefit of it in the society that yep. you've grown up in. Yeah. And no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think I think the individual can come to terms with it, but I think as a as a people, no, you, you're probably right. There's no, all, all of the countries that have, that have completely divorced themselves of any notion of a sort of national religion or something have yeah. ended up <laughs> communist hell. Well, <laughs> but it doesn't need, but here's the thing. It doesn't need that. Uh, that's not the point I was sort of trying to make in terms of um, th that there needs to be a, a uh, direct, you know, uh, people, well, how, how do I word it? People in this country have taken uh, freedom of religion and they've confused it with freedom from religion everywhere. And the problem with that is, is that it is a part of the history of this country, that this country's principles and ideas would not have come out of any other cultural background. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. they haven't. Yeah, Let's no, that's, yeah that's right. Then that, that's, that's again, yeah, that's sort of what I was mumbling around yes. as well. That yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. you know, a beneficiary of that uh that society you know, yes. that culture yeah yeah i mean there's uh, american comics company i have said it for years you're always in good company when you're with american comics company hail to you my friend you are just killing it in the chat in the chat here and i will tell you this guys this is the thing about it is this stuff keeps coming up again and again and again and i was what is it that um, it, this is not an argument for what people should think. It's an argument for what, what we have seen. And I want to point out that this conversation is happening at four 14 in the morning, my time, by the way, <laughs> this is the only lucid... time these conversations happen. That's right. See, if you don't, if you don't get high <laughs> late night, will do the same thing. 
but yeah. this is this is this is a, a total we're high conversation but it's like this right yeah, yeah. is that is that um that i've always i uh, what i said to one of my friends was about all this stuff is i go you know man for somebody who you know claims to be not religious you have a ton of religious like beliefs and it seems to me that people need to um how do i word it whatever that mystery is it has been articulated beautifully in these stories and there, there is a mystery there is you know the the there, there's always the questions behind the questions we don't know everything but however it's what you envision that thing to be and what you articulate the nature of those things are and there's certain um, ideas like, and they come from the the Western and you know canon and the Western history going back. But they were really perfected in this union and some of the things that we do. And while um, it's it's other countries do variations on it, they there's this thing that Americans do that drives me nuts, which is they look down. A lot of Americans do. They look down their nose at their own country and don't realize that without us the whole thing falls apart. We are basically, there's no other country that's going to be the wall for this stuff. It's a sea of, of uglier ideas that run things quite brutally and effectively for what they do. And uh, if people don't want to be a part of that, they have to really learn what went before them and what made all this possible. And it pisses me off that people don't. Uh, we have got na 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 in the chat saying everyone has a god hole in their souls and they need to fill it. They can't fill it with light or darkness or worst apathy. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. They can fill it with light and, or um, with light or darkness or worst apathy. And I would say this, by the way, I hope your your uh, your most recent addition, your grandson, is doing well and that your youngest is uh, doing well as well. It's great to see you in the chat. And Ryan Johnson, Eric Huffle is one of the best kinds of high, absolutely high on life. Go ahead, Michael. Sorry. Here's something you might not know about Australia. Not many Americans, comparatively, stay uh -huh. here long term compared to, say, New Zealanders or Brits. Yeah. Uh, Americans love it when they come here. It seems like a paradise. I think in general... Uh, you know, most of Australia is like the nice parts of the American cities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's safe. It's clean. It's, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, I, I think we're the wealthiest nation in the world per person. I think that's true. Oh. Um, but uh, they end up leaving <laughs> because they sort of, they see that they see how it is the way it is. It's the little yeah. things that nag on them. And it's just a, it's a very basic difference mm -hmm. in, in worldview that the Brits are fully on board with and the New Zealanders are fully on board with. It's, it's that exactly what Oz, Oz great sages have said. It's mm -hmm. the nanny state. It's the mm -hmm. continue. It's the, co this constant authoritarianism and it's, you know, it's not, it's obviously not like the heavy hand. It can get quite heavy. But most of the uh -huh. time, it's just little things. It's like, yeah, you know, you, if you ride out, if you go out on a scooter without a without a helmet on, that's a hundred and fifty dollar fine. And you're like, uh -huh. oh, well, that's not a big deal. And then you, but, but then it, it's constant. It's across everything. And then it's like, it's not only that. The the police will get on the news, and the news is very much state news, very much state news. It's like watching the you know China uh, agit prop. And, and the, the uh -huh. out comes the police commissioner. And he's very proud and celebratory of the fact that we have handed out $37,000 worth of fines for these terrible law-breaking people who aren't wearing their helmets on their scooters. And uh, all the journalists are sitting there clapping their hands. This is, I mean, it is never even, the nanny state is never questioned, ever. Uh -huh. It's never, like, it's just like, you want people to die because they're not wearing helmets. And this is one tiny element of it. This it, it, It's across all society in all levels. And eventually 
Americans just say, I've had enough. I got to get out of here. It's just like, I would rather go live in the dingy part of wherever I was living in, in the, some American city where, yeah. Okay. Sure. I have a chance of getting mugged, but at least I'll be free. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, well, that's what happens. The, the only things I understand, I gotta be honest with you. I, I don't know a lot, but my vision of Australia is almost entirely based on this ad. Uh, and so just tell me if this, because I imagine this is what Australia is like from coast to coast. And so if this isn't the case, I want to know now. So let me, let me just share this with you because it's, it's important. Here, let me, uh, let's see here. Let's move to this, this, boy, this is a, this is a cluster. Let me see here. Here we go. And then we're going to go <laughs> to, uh, get that, you know, eventually you hit this the right nice button. Avatar. They are. There's some great avatars. Let's see if that. There you go. There you go, kids. So let's let's have it. I'm gonna play this. We do have beautiful women here. Although they usually have a really Baka accent. I see what they're trying to recreate here. I think I don't recognize it. <laughs> oh, terrible editing. <laughs> this happens the, more this happens more often <laughs> the linda would... swimsuit uh which they made and then there's a sequel of course to this commercial and here you go this is actual australia don't listen to michael michael's he doesn't understand this is the sequel to that commercial now we're down at sydney so we were previously we we're up in say the kimberleys or something stop destroying my that. dreams <laughs> Now oh, we're, we're down about to in the lose bay. the stream. <laughs> it's a My very wifi. nice um it's a very nice swimsuit, I have to say. That it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that would be a salt border. I don't think I don't think they have crocodiles in Sydney, I don't think wrong. But... Oh my good lord. What does it sound like Star Wars? Because it is, you know, I mean, uh, oh, damn, Shant, what are you showing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not showing you, I was just pointing something out that two beers, bad, that's one for me, and one for me, mate. I don't give a damn what you I think. I feel like of her she's accent. famous, I feel like that. Uh, she is to me, I feel like she's like a famous, so anyway. Um, model i'm moving to australia is my point <laughs> um that's what happens speaking... you americans you come over here for that reason and you're fine yep. here for like five years and then you just you just have enough and you can't take it anymore oh so you, you think out. that one can have enough i i, I feel like I, we don't understand each other um <laughs> i i imagine that that is Australia from coast to coast. Don't tell me any different, Michael. These dreams are all I have. Uh <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna break your heart, Shanth. Not all Australians have a butt like that. I'm sorry. But it's In the fact, dream that we can all get a butt like that. Oh, you mean like on I would, them? I Never would mind. say I would say almost no Australians have a butt like that. <laughs> almost none. I think Don't the ones that office. do get paid a lot of money to go in ads like that. That's right. Hey, listen, I'm all for it. People should earn things. Yeah, the dying days of YouTube goes, I'm at work, shop. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's uh, It happens. Yeah, someone said the Princess Leia theme. Yeah, uh, she's got birth and hips. Darn right. Uh, 80s long swimsuit, how we miss you. Yeah, so when I was a kid, I saw Crocodile Dundee, and um, I had a dream, Michael. Uh, <laughs> was like... That you would one day travel yeah. to the Northern Territory 
I love this, by the way. Live out That's your not a thong, <laughs> says Oz Great Sage. This is a thong. No, you're with thongs <laughs> on your feet. Yeah, that's exactly so right. That's on exactly right. Add a pound of meth per Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, we just have to spirit their women away. There you have it, guys. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, it's oh, good look, if stuff. you can put up with the accent, then... You know, <laughs> Sorry, Sean, up. more shazzles than Linda's here. So, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's one of those things. Me and Shoth will room in Michael's cottage. That's right. Uh, and uh, that's a nice suit. But let's see, Wicked Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> we had actually, actually, when God. Mel's parents were allowed to come here, they stayed in in the cottage. We had a, we bought a fold out uh, bed thing. Yeah, they slept in. And, uh, yeah. I don't know where they would stay if they were able to come back now because now this is my work studio slash YouTube studio. So yeah, I don't know what would happen. Dan and I aren't coming down there unless the three of us can spoon. And Mel's got to be okay <laughs> with that. Or I'm not. I'm not interested in flying that she kind of mind. distance and not getting some cuddles. You guys are out. so spot with the flying too. By the way, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like we can't get out of our country, if, you know, for under uh, ten hours, unless you go to New Zealand. That's the only place you can go. Just remember who won the war. Wait, no, that didn't. God, I gotta really do more history studying. Um, <laughs> the Battle of Australia. Um... Do you remember what Rommel? Do you remember what Rommel said about Australians? No. Do you know what he said about Australians? Let me look that up. It's a good quote. I would, but Rommel I got a brush in my hand right now. <laughs> Uh, where is I'm it? listening to the morning birds chirping. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> Everything's waking up here, man. Uh, oh so Ernst, er Erwin Rommel, who incidentally uh, took when he when in the occupation of France took residence in the um, sh in the palace at my mm -hmm. at Mel's parents' village. Yeah, and there's a little connection there. He said, "If I had to take hell." I would use Australians to take it and New Zealanders to hold it. That's how there much respect he had for the uh, Anzacs. We were uh, hell to fight against back in World War II in, in Africa. So here's my question. Why are you running that beautiful nation down and I am advertising tourists come there to see the swimsuits of Australia? I'm not That's running the nation down. I'm just saying... I'm just saying, if 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 people who think like me are the majority, the silent majority, we need to get our act together because uh, a vocal minority definitely. is a, worth a lot more than a silent majority when it comes to getting things done. That's what I. That's what I've learned. You're in an the artist last five years. with persuasion ability, and it's the, the thing about it is, it's like I sort of hear that the movie Gandhi when I was a kid. Uh, the it wasn't Gandhi's line, but another person said, you know, you need to help give India a sense of herself. You know, like, what is this country like the people are are so divided up and, and they've you know, they're living, you know, in, you know, with British as a British colony. And, you know, what's going to they have to have something they can think that they're replacing their current apathy or their current you know, resignation to what things are with. And that's got to be some kind of belief. Like when we talked about Gilgamesh, man, and you were talking about um, that, and we, I found out that that statue was in your country. That's an mm. Australian. That's there because of Australians. So there's stuff there that one could tap into. And you're going to do it by speaking to the youth. And you're going to do it by telling big stories. I mean, Star Wars, why they... I don't think it's why they went after it, except for it was exceptional and they can't stand other people's optimism. But the stories of Star Wars really affected how people, you know, looked at their lives and their worlds um, as a result of it. And I think that, you know, um, the Bible has had a huge impact on this country and how this country does things. But those old stories and those new stories or those religious ideas 
you know, get walked through the Greeks and you get the Renaissance. They get walked through the medieval period and you get those beautiful illuminated manuscripts and incredible works and churches. And, and so I just kind of say to myself, like, where is, you know, offering people, it's like uh, quitting smoking. You can't quit smoking and replace it with nothing. You've got to find something to replace it with. You can't quit mainstream comics, as Comics Gate has proven, and replace it with no comics. You got to give mm. people an alternative and an alternative that can compete. And their ideas, you know, as people often say, speak to the elephant, not to the rider. And uh, getting into conversations about like it, it's pushing our exasperation level, you know, and being able to push it so far that we can tolerate the bullshit enough to have those conversations and and you know elon musk made some beautiful moves and he took twitter right joe rogan has made some beautiful moves and he's more powerful than cnn just one person you know what i'm saying and it's yeah. it's that's ethan and i do i'm gonna put i understand you boy zach i understand comics gate history but let's be real you know about this one particular thing ethan stepped into the center of this shit and suffered so many slings and arrows. Like, they took away... Your boy, Zach, did not have a huge career in comics, making tons of cash like Ethan did. And that was his whole career. There was no other profession he could go to, no other thing. And it, he built that over time. They they went after that. They took that from him. And CG and Comicsgate lifted him up. He's just one person who created that that space and was that target where a lot of us were able to come into like he, his going back to his star Wars content, everything that grew this stuff, he became, you know, the most important voice in comics gate for a reason. Yeah. He has the personality too, but I think it's bigger than that because what they took from him was enormous. They took his whole career. Um, they took his hair obviously and hair color. I agree with that. Ryan Johnson. Yeah, and um, yeah, you look back on those so, early days. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cecil is a wreck now compared to where he's. Actually, that's no, not true. Cecil has been slowly stealing <laughs> Ethan's power, but but this is the thing about it, you know, guys. Is is I look at this stuff in Perth Comics. Absolutely, if I had to pick anyone as a meat shield, it would be UBS. But this is this is the thing, right? <laughs> a meat shield. <laughs> I've never heard that. Uh, that's a wonderfully oh expressive, uh, descriptive Guys, expression. Whatever, whatever happens to me, by the way, I got to say this, guys. Um, I want someone to find my tombstone, like in uh, Young Guns, you know, and carve into it, death by chat. <laughs> he laughed to death because the chat cracked him up too much, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, guys, like, this is this is the shit I think about all day long. What Ethan stood up to on Twitter and put himself out there. John has to. A lot of people have, but Ethan did it in such a entertaining but also compelling way. He held the line, and he really pushed this shit hard. And I will tell you one of the things that was really interesting and stuck with me. And you know, again, it's four thirty-two in the morning, kids. So forgive me if I'm a little rambly, but was the fact that he said the first thing he did when he found out that they weren't going to renew his contract and they basically were like, this is it. He looked at Andrea and he said, what do we do? What are we going to do? And she looked at him and she said, and they were, I, I can't speak, but if I remember with my Asperger's correctly, um, that she, she, he, she said, or he said, you know, we should pray. And they had not been particularly religious up to that point. But they they needed to call upon the strength of something and something I know that's very important to them and important to them and their family. And I just can't help but think but there seems to be some through line there. And I've talked with Gabe El Taib about this a lot. And, you know, um, and, and I just think that there is something about um, and, and I know this is true if you want to take it outside of that realm. It's true with with, you know, the Mahatma with Gandhi and what he called upon to stand up just one person. What is it? This little skinny half naked Indian man, in a loincloth challenging the British empire, but you just got to be willing to take the slings and arrows. And he did. 
you know, and he was backstabbed and all this other crap by people. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, Ethan was just, a, here you go. Ethan was just about the best interior artist in comics when he quit. And he Yeah, quit. that's the crazy thing that they try and, they try and deny that. But they said they weren't going to renew his contract. And they were like, basically let this simmer down. But he was betrayed by a company he dedicated his life to. I know you guys all know this, but for anybody who's new, uh, he, he, you know, put all this stuff, all this crap, you know, uh, that, that, you know, he, he, he do, dealt with were from people who were essentially living off of his dime. All the things he helped build during those times that weren't huge for comics. He made Green Lantern a thing, Green Lantern Rebirth, the, you know, Green Lantern Emotional Spectrum. And it's, uh, it, it, this is, these are huge things. And, you know, it's, I just, I think that it's, um, it, I hope it's, it, he feels some sense that he's not a lot. I mean, I'm sure he does that. He's not, it's not just a handful of people standing up to this stuff, but I feel like at the very least, all of us need to put in the same percentage of what is we're capable of into comic skate to make this thing work, you know, and to keep it going. Like we may not all have, you know, the same skill level or the same entertainment level or the same, whatever, but whatever we have, we should be putting into our work and putting into our craft to improve these things. And I think that we all are, but it definitely shouldn't come down to one person or one channel or one station. But it's got to have been, no matter how much of many of us are there, Ethan is still running point on, or has been running point on this a lot, you know, and uh, it's it that shows the power of one person. So, you know, if there's if you have these thoughts about things that people need to know in Australia, you know, it starts with one person. And then how do I communicate it? Well, how do I communicate it? I think about that all the time, man. And I don't I mean, I may fall short of the glory, but I'm going to you know, we are we're all trying, aren't we? You know, we're all trying to do it. Well, I start with my kids. That's where I start. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, hopefully, it will sink into their heads. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I love having these conversations. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I'm into all this stuff. Uh, and know, and as well, I'm of the mind that you know we do what was neglected for far too long which is just we we fight back by putting out good stuff stuff yes. that will last the test of time and uh, and uh, interest people over time mm -hmm. yeah we don't have to we don't have to become the people that we despise to beat them <laughs> oh my god oz great sage ethan running point press x to doubt on eps running anywhere <laughs> 5xl yeah. let me tell you something the greatest streams in the world were um were, are, are some of those crazy streams with uh on the jack show i think it was on cecil's channel or it was on john's i'm not sure whose it was but there was this one when he went out to the pie barons and i am gonna do a live uh efap of that i've got to do it and I'm want I'll have you on anyone who wants to come on. But there's a part where he goes, um, you know, if Ethan gets into trouble, he can just run. And Cecil John says, and Cecil goes, No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> it was just absolutely. I mean, Cecil's delivery, but here you go. Dan Flagel's got something for us here. Tommy. Most people have a full measure of life, and most people just watch it slowly drip away. But if you can summon it all up at one time in one place, you can accomplish something glorious. And that is a very dang good quote there. Yeah. Dan Plagle says, Sean Connery line that I think about when I think about Ethan in this respect. Hail, well said, my friend. Have you seen, uh, have you seen the, uh, I think it was HBO, the John Adams mm -hmm. uh, Love that series. series. It was great. There's yeah, so Paul many Giamatti. quotable lines. Yeah, there's so many quotable lines from that. Uh, that they took directly from his actual diary. Yeah. Uh, I love the one where it's Abigail 
it's right at the end of the se- at the of the se- of the uh, series or well, series or whatever it is mini series uh-huh. where she says I never expected or wanted you to be a passive observer you know you uh-huh. had to I could tell you know you had to be a part of it in some way yeah it to be doing something about it and I always always think of that whenever I hear it. And it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm really happy that I'm finally off the sidelines and yes. involved in some way, in some small part of uh, of whatever's happening here. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's a lot bigger than co- just Comic Skate. You know, it's it's it is, it is. all connected. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, we're all sort of doing our bit. We are. And, and listen, you know, it's it's I really I saw what was happening here and I had to be a part of it in the same way you did. And I think that's why we're kindred spirits, you know, and it's like, uh, you know, when I was looking at I was when I was on John's stream, which was <laughs> freaking it's surreal. Every, it's still surreal to me, man. All this shit's surreal. But I was when I was on John's stream and I was. And I was, I'd made a crack earlier in the evening when I was funny enough on Lord Crackhead 33's channel. Um, uh, Stephen Rockwood, I'm about to wrap up too. It's almost five here, but uh, but uh, I'll leave you guys with thoughts and you take care and sleep well, man. Um, but this is the thing, you know, I, I said, I jokingly said, I'm one away earlier that in the evening from having one backer for every day of the year, hitting 365. And after that stream, we had hit 365. And I just think that's what it is. It's day by day. It's it's the grind. Mm-hmm. It's what we're doing. And seeing people, you know, even though we we you know, I don't know what people's take on is on it now, but back in the heydays of you know the fandom menace and all that stuff, and Jeff Hicks and all those channels, which was a big part of it to me, I thought is nobody seeing much like how you boy Zach was for for you guys. Um, Star Wars was so huge for me. And I was like, is anyone else seeing like how awful this is? I feel like I'm living in a world of, of, <laughs> you know, where I'm being gaslit that this is the best thing ever and that Star Wars needed to be fixed. The one that got me was the Ryan Johnson. Uh, when Last Jedi came out, somebody said, it's not the Star Wars movie that fans want. It's the one they need. And I remember thinking, what are you, Nurse Ratchet? You know, <laughs> is this one flew over the cuckoo's nest? Is this, I'm being disciplined with my entertainment. I'm being scolded. And yeah. it was, it was like oxygen just to find one or two other people. Those streams used to keep me sane. And of course, you know, to me, it was like, I have to get back into, I, it's like, I have to go, you know, Clint Eastwood getting his, you know, <laughs> his guns out, you know, or, uh, shoot almost in any Western in tombstone for God's sake, when Wyatt Earp goes and gets out his, his six shooters, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I've got to put that, put that badge on and I've got to go back out there. I was like, I need to take whatever artistic skill and ability that I have. And I need to stop being a part of this academic institution world. And I need to start doing things for the people who believe in things that I believe in that are important, like the Linda swimsuit. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, But also pop culture, pulp, freedom of expression, the ability to make artwork that is sexy and fun and playful. All of that stuff that CG stands for basically what you're, you can do in the Western world and few other places. And that's, I believe, an underboob too, Ryan Johnson. You know it. It's true. And yes, J.J. Abrams is a cultural Hail the animal. underboob. Yeah, hail the underboob. And hail the Linda swimsuit, by the way. It should be Australia's national bird. Um, and so <laughs> the thing about it is, is that, yeah, it's, it's, this is, this is what it is, guys. We can do this, you know, what's that, that, oh, God, if you ever want to watch a movie that is my, is my spiritual center in so many ways, watch the Kevin Costner movie Open Range. It's got one of my favorite lines in it. It's one of the best, you know, Western movies um, about, you know, uh, just it's just incredible. It's an incredible movie. It's got Robert Bobby Duvall, Robert Duvall in it. And there's a part where he goes, 
um, where they're arguing and he goes uh, with, he's arguing with some townspeople who won't stand up to the thug of the town. And he says, uh, what can we do? And uh, Kevin Costner, you know, or uh, looks at him and goes, well, you're men, aren't you? And I love that quote. It's, it's something I think about all the time. You know, what do you mean? What can we do? You know, it's what, what has to be done and how do we make it happen? And if, if doing this painting, you know, when people look at this painting and they say, oh man, I want a print of that. Oh, I want something to do. If when I do this painting, if somebody hires me for a job and it makes the book sell better, then I've done my bit. That's what I'm there to do. I'm there to do nothing short of improve the sales of my books and my autonomy and my independence and pulling my weight, uh, which is considerable increasingly. And mm -hmm. it's, what? it's, yeah. And, and, and also bringing like, we can't, it can't be enough for us to say, well, we think we're better than these people. We have to show people we're better. And when they can do things like this, bring it. Otherwise it's put up or shut up. Look at the stuff we're doing. Look at your Eiffel tower. And also look at the Eiffel Tower you've drawn. Had to make that joke. Uh, <laughs> when you when you when you're looking at this Lincoln. stuff, yeah, you, I couldn't resist, man. I couldn't resist. But when you're looking at the stuff we're doing, I'm like, please, by all means, guys, by all means, do what it is you can, because we are not going to stop until. We've made it all happen. That's it. We've got books. We've been making things. Then you guys aren't going to be able to get this shit done. I am two books in to Indiegogo campaigns because Ethan, Comicsgate, and even the Phantom Menace inspired me to get out there and to do this shit. And I've been doing it. That's it. This is this is the quality that we can do. This is one person doing this entire book and an amazing group of backers. I have the most backers I've ever had on any of my Indiegogo campaigns because of Comicsgate. Because you guys have opened up your hearts and your wallets to this campaign. And you have made this shit happen for me and my family. And my wife and I thank you. And this crazy Australian, who I believe, when he is sitting right now off camera... He's wearing a Linda swimsuit because that is what that commercial has told me. Uh, I have it on, on underneath his... my T-shirt. I'm wearing it right now. You see, you'd never think the guy accusing you would be the one wearing it. That's my trick. <laughs> uh, no, but it's it's all projection. But you had me. We we met. You knew me from Instagram, but you had me on your stream sight unseen, and uh, the, all this crazy cool stuff. The launch of my book and. You know, the ARO painting and all of this stuff, it's its like it's magic how this stuff has happened. And you guys have been there for all of it. And we're so grateful. And I'm, you know, as, as tough as things are, I'm always hopeful and optimistic because, as you know, and I won't get into it on this stream, I walked through, I walked out of a lot of difficult crap to get to where I'm at right now. And none of this shit scares me at all. None of it. Because... It's all just about hard work at the end of the day. And if there's a clock on how much time I have, cool. Then I know I only have to be strong for so long and I'm going to get to work and make the stuff happen. You know, it's, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just keep, you know, chipping away at this stuff. And I've got great people around me, the best people I've ever had around me in Comicsgate. And I feel incredibly grateful for it. And I feel grateful for all of you guys. That's how it is. Hey, do you want to mm -hmm. see the uh, the Eiffel darn Tower? right I do? I didn't have you in here just because you're wearing the Linda, okay? All right, <laughs> hang on a second. Let me get rid of this. Let me stop this camera so I can get this damn thing right. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna, let's see it. Figuring I'm gonna it share out. it here and stream. <laughs> God, I hate whatever I'm doing. I hate it. There we go. Woo! So uh, this is what Smoking. I lost. This is what I lost uh, all down here. Uh, hang on. Have you That's saved it? Really no, I lost it this morning. Uh, so no, I, I mean, have you saved it now? <laughs> oh, actually, no, I haven't. But I set up a much more aggressive autosave. Please save uh, it. So... <laughs> I thought, screw it, because this was just trees earlier. 
I was like, yeah, screw yeah, yeah. it. I'm adding in a building. You know, That's right, I right. want to draw the trees again. So I'll put in a bu little building down here. Because uh, there is actually a building there. I just wasn't yeah. going to have it in originally because I was like, do I need to draw even more buildings? But, mm -hmm. uh, oh, well. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you make, you get lemonade, you make lemons, whatever. Um, Fall it, down it hurt, seven times, uh, get up eight. It hurts that I have to draw all this stuff again. But, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do it. It'll be fine. I think it'll actually be better the second time around. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's coming along. But uh, here, John, no rivets. Look, yeah. there's no rivets in there. I mean, wow. you're not going to be able to see it that close, but... Uh, you know what yeah. I like about that piece? You show it to the average SJW hipster artist, and they shit their pants. And that's why it's great. <laughs> they can't imagine doing something like that, man. You know? It's, it's a, beautiful. Yeah, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work. I, Mo, the trees will be back. I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like... I, it takes me a while. Last time I, I well, it doesn't happen often. It ha it's happened probably about once a year. I'll lose, you know, a couple of hours of work or whatever for some reason. Uh -huh. And yeah, it takes me a while to draw it again because there's a, there's just, even talking about it now, it makes my skin start to burn. It wasn't even that long. It was just an hour and a half. But, you know, I get up yeah. early in the morning. I get up early in the morning. You know me, my day's regimented. And it hurts. It actually physically hurts to get up as early as I do uh -huh. so that I have this time to work on the book. And then an hour and a half later, all that time is lost. And it was just, it just, it annoys me in a way that nothing else does. But yeah. uh, it's all right. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Let me, let me say this too, you know, and I think this is important. You're the, you wouldn't be so stressed about how early you got up if you just stayed up till it's early. Yeah, I'm just throwing that, that out there. It's four. <laughs> it's, it's, it's four. Look, dude, you know the time. It's sleep. four. Four fifty-one a.m. See, that's why I, I you know what know I love what about your trailer. Crazy guys are doing. I have it memorized, of course, because I'm playing it at the start of every stream. But it's like what it goes. You can't conquer death because you can't even conquer sleep. I'm like, speak for yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've conquered sleep, and and there was something from earlier in the stream again because of my. Uh, because of my unique brain. It's a quote, simple Jack in Tropic Thunder. I have a good, 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 good brain. <laughs> the simple fact <laughs> is, is that um, uh, someone asked me, they said, do, um, do your uh, uh, vampire sleep in coffins? And again, not really, because as my vampire origins go back to Egypt, uh, they sleep in sarcophagus. That is my myth. They may get more simplified, but the vampire in my mythos, the reason why they sleep in those, you know, in their coffins is actually because of their, you know, history, which was, this, you know, and the, the, you know, living dead and coming back to life from the dead of, of the sarcophagus. So, yeah, there's so much cool visual stuff. By the way, um, I say always. I want to be really clear about that. Uh, <laughs> I say always. Yeah. Yeah, Hale, you all are up late. Technically, I'm up early. Uh, never go full retard. It. Yeah, never go full retard. You don't believe me? Look at Sean Penn. <laughs> and I am Sam. Went full retard, went home empty handed. Yeah, one of those all time great lines. Lincoln Osiris, man, is the man. Gotta love it. Yeah, guys. So, listen, folks, it is uh, eight minutes till five in the morning here. Um, I am going to, uh, you know, take a couple of minutes, probably 30, 40 minutes to sort of wind down and then get some sleep. Um, but I want to tell you guys this in the chat, and I mean this from the heart. I wish all of you guys dreams of the Linda swimsuit, uh, sincerely. And, um, and I hope you have said dreams. Michael, what closing thoughts do you have? Um, Sign up for the Lucent 2 Paint of Death, I hope. Sign up for the Lucent 2. Uh, hang Link on. in the I, description. I just, if, yeah, if it is in there. Uh, and this is for, um, I can't remember who it was, who wanted... who wanted uh, Godzilla. Godzilla. And I've got my stabilization on. That's why I'm not... It's not drawing right. Hang on, here we go. That's the best kind of it's Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's beautiful. He's coming out of the river to attack the Eiffel Tower. There you go. That's right. Yeah. That there you guys go. Look at that. Yes. Good night, Jordan. <laughs> good night, everybody. Crack pack, pack every day. Go get some rest, Michael, my friend. Um, and actually, I'm gonna say hey to you real quick after this, just because I'm gonna say good night to you after this when I go to sleep. Uh, but uh, but I gotta play you guys out with this. So uh, yeah, here you guys go, you beautiful, beautiful people. Here is your song. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You inspire music. Never let anyone tell you different. Here's a little something for you, busters. Yeah. You're not even learning anything on this beat. Yeah. You think I'm stupid, son? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Yeah. Do you? What's up with that? Look at me, damn it. Y'all cowards don't even smoke crap. What's up with that? You smoke crack, don't you? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. Look at me, boy. Hey to you. you smoke crack, don't you? Don't even smoke crack. You know what that does to you? Huh? You smoke crack, don't you? Smoke crack. Go on and do it exponentially. What's up with that? It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. Don't even smoke crack. No gut, huh? I apologize. I forgot you were there. You may go now. <laughs>